Well, happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to the Valentino's edition over here on YouTube. I want to thank the very uh, lovely Catherine Young for sending all of her uh, folks that were watching her over to us. And uh, Catherine, thank you so much for always being so supportive of of other YouTubers. And um, we hope you guys are here to have some fun with us tonight. If you are not familiar with the fellows on your screen, we are the Valentinos. We get together uh, every other Friday. The first Friday is always on Instagram. And then every other after is over here on YouTube. But to familiarize you with who is on your screen, we have the world-renowned, the one, the only Pyrex and Tupperware man himself is Garden Guy Bill. How are you, sir? I'm Tupper tired. <laughs> that was good. And, and the master of the display, the one, the only John of Everyday Holiday Display. How are you, sir? I'm good. Tupper worn out would have been better. But, oh, you know, that's, that's good. Oh, <laughs> maybe, maybe John can throw together a Tupperware uh, display just for Bill. Just for Bill, maybe someday. Just for Bill. Just to, maybe, maybe when the, you know, maybe it's when it's been a couple of weeks. I don't want to. You know, it's probably too soon. And the king of the mid-century is the one, the only. Brian, how are you, sir? Good. I feel like I need to contribute to this. So, like, Bill, you should have been Tupper-tastic. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I should sing the Tupperware song to the tune of Let's Get Physical. Let's get Tupperware. <laughs> Tupperware. I, I have that stuck in my head, Bill. I'm telling you, we we got to get him on here somehow. I, I want to meet this fellow. But with all that said, maybe someday we'll tell you what we're singing about and what's going on. But please, if you are not following the fellows on your screen, please do so. Some of them have YouTube channels, which we put their links in, but all of us have Instagram accounts. So please make sure you follow all of them because they do have sales over on Instagram and you want to be notified when they go live. OK, so please. And every little interaction helps us grow our small businesses. So please make sure you follow all of us over on Instagram and over here on YouTube. So as we go live tonight, we have a variety sale. So it's going to be you know, there's going to be a little bit of this, that, the other thing. But our official mod and bid ender is the one, the only Karen G. Thank you, Karen. And our backup mod and bid ender is going to be the very lovely Kim, also known as Desert Gal. So thank you guys so much. We're going to quickly say hello to as many people as we can in the chat. Then Bill's going to tell us how the sale is going to work. And then uh, we're going to jump into it because we got a lot of vintage for you guys tonight. So the very first person in the chat is the lovely Terry. How are you, Terry? It's so good to see you. Followed by Willie in the house. Good to see you, William, sir. As always, I hope you are doing well, my Christmas-loving friend. There's the one, the only, Mary Jo. It's so good to see you, Mary. Hopefully, you're having a very good week. And we're so honored that you guys are spending your Friday evening with us. That means a lot. How are you, Cindy Lou? It's so good to see you, Cindy Lou. How are you, Lisa? How are you? She's looking forward to the sale. Thank you so much. That makes us feel so good. Our backup, I mean, our official mod and bid ender is the one, the only Karen G. So good to see you. But our backup mod and bid ender is the very lovely Kim, also known as Desert Gal. Thank you, ladies, so very much. We could not host and do these sales without your help. There's my mother, Linda, in the chat. So good to see you, Mom. I love you. There's our friend Tracy, Artsy Fartsy. Good to see you, Tracy. Hopefully you're doing well. There she is, Pat Robinson. Always puts a smile on my face. It's good to see you, Pat. Hopefully you're doing well, friend. Who else is here with us? There's our friend, the very lovely Amy, Enamor Amy. And you too, Amy, thank you so much for promoting the folks today during your sale to come on over and hang out with us. Thank you so much, our vintage sister and our kitsch sister as well. Who else is here with us? I see Wings in the chat. Happy Friday. It's good to see you, Wings. Hopefully you're doing well. I'm having a scrolling issue. There we go. How are you, Bug? It's so good to see you. Who else is here? Val's checking in. It's good to see you, Val. Hopefully you're doing well. There she is. Karen Kennedy, how are you? It's good to see you. Followed by Susan Lynn and Ann Kiki, who was your official bid ender during the Tupperware sale. So, Good to see you, Ann Kiki. So thank you so much, Catherine Young, again, for sending folks over. And if you weren't here a few moments ago, thank you for being so supportive of other YouTube channels. And if you are not following Catherine Young, please make sure you give her a follow. She has a really great YouTube channel with some really good content. 
There she is, Patty Rose, checking in from the Garden State. Good to see you, Patty. How are you, Cheryl? Happy Friday. Followed by Glowy Girl. Good to see you, Glowy Girl. There's Miss Karen chasing at Vintage. And folks, she's trying to get to 500 subscribers. Please help her. If you're not following her, please do so. She has a YouTube channel. So I think when she hits 500, she's going to be giving a giveaway. I think she's been doing like a, a jar of treasures that she wants to give away. So she wants to hit 500. How are you, Nancy Smith? It's so good to see you. Oh, we will. You too have a blessed weekend. It's so great to see you. How are you, Laura? Welcome, everybody. Jumping in from the Garden State as well. The other friend is Steel Whisper. It's so great to see you. Followed by Dusty Moose. Dusty Moose is here with us. Good to see you. Who else is here with us tonight? Hey, Smalls, how are you? It's so good to see you. We'll scroll on down here and say hello to some more of our friends. Happy Friday. We hope you guys are ready to kick your weekend off in style. Who else is here? I see Sandy. How are you, Sandy? Checking in from Colorado is our friend Chris, my broom closet. Again, Chris, hope you're doing well. Always thinking of you, friend. There's Tina checking in from Mother Tucker. So good to see you, Tina. It's been a while. Who else is here with us tonight? I'm scrolling on down. Hi, Deborah. How are you? It's so good to see you, friend. Hopefully you're doing well. Who else is down here with us? I see a couple duplicate names. There she is, our friend Heather. Uh, she has a very, very fun channel. She is Antique Agenda. Please make sure you give her a follow and make sure you hit that notification bell because she has sales every single Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. So she curates some really fun vintage. So please, please give her a follow. You will not be sorry. There she is, our friend Sharon, checking in, Freddie Fines. Hope you're feeling better, friend. I remember you said you weren't feeling so well this week, so we hope you're feeling good. Who else is in here with us? As I scroll down, guys, if I ever miss you, please know it's never intentional. My chat moves a little bit different, and it could just be that my eye didn't catch you. So we're going to click there, and we're going to click off. So again, guys, as we go live, we have about 90 of you here. Uh, please, please make sure you're subscribed to everybody here on the channel. If they have a YouTube channel and or follow them on Instagram, you will not be sorry because you will enjoy some of the vintage that they share with you. So we're about eight minutes into it. Bill's going to tell us how the sale is going to work. Then we'll go around and tell you where we're all from and how we're going to handle our shipping. And then we'll jump right into it. So the floor is yours, my, my friend, Bill. It's all you. All right. So we know a lot of you know how this works. So I'm going to do this briefly. But the most important thing is if you don't know what's going on and you have a question, the chat is there for you to use it uh, to get your questions answered. If you have a question at any time, you don't know what's going on, you don't know what we're talking about, we're we're just talking nonsense. We tend to do that sometimes. Um, just put your question in the chat and either one of our moderators will answer it, one of us will answer it, or one of the many people in the chat who know the answer will answer it. So that's the first thing to know. Everything actually happens in the chat. So you wanna make sure that you're in the best version of the chat possible. And on your device, that would be live chat or all messages. If at the top of your screen, you see top messages, you wanna use your little toggle switch and move over to all messages. That means you will see the entire chat. Nothing will get filtered out for you. The other thing you want to do is make sure that you're not falling behind in the chat because of your internet speed. And that is normal. That happens for all of us. Uh, and there are a couple things you can do about it. The first one is you can refresh YouTube. You can close YouTube uh, at a point in the sale where there, there's a break, uh, come back in, click on the sale, make sure that little red dot is all the way over to the right and you should be caught up. Another thing you can do is with, on the settings menu on your device, it's usually a little gear icon. You can click on it, you can hit the um, choice playback speed and set it to two times and that should catch you up to where we are in real time. And that's particularly important if there's an item you really wanna bid on and, and maximize your opportunity to get it. And speaking of bidding, um, we have, I gotta get this right, we have 10, 10 rounds of offer up items tonight and two rounds of quick claims. I tell you, I cannot keep it straight. Um, so that means we have a total of 12 <laughs> rounds each. We will do the first 10 rounds then we will do a recap of anything that wasn't claimed in the first 10 rounds. Then after that, stick around because we have two rounds of quick claims, which uh, the rules for that work a little bit differently and I'll explain them later. But for the first 10 rounds, we are doing an offer up style <laughs> sale, which means we show an item, 
uh, Jason will pin the start price right where you see our names now. And you, you can begin bidding on the item as we describe the item, tell you anything we know about it. Maybe you know something about it and you can pop it in the chat and tell you any condition uh, issues that you need to know. We do like to point out that we are selling vintage items. So they have had previous lives and uh, we do our best to point out condition issues. But um, if you have a question about an item as, you're, as we're showing it, please put it in the chat so we can answer it to our best ability before you decide whether or not you wanna bid on it. After we get a few bids, we're going to announce a countdown. Uh, we will count down from 20. We do 20 second countdowns. And at the end of that countdown, our official bid ender, Karen Gillette, uh, who is in the chat right now, you can see her with the daisy icon. Uh, she will type the words bid end into the chat, the highest bid before the bid end claims the item. We do like to remind you that a claim on an item is a promise to pay. And all of the guys on the screen, once they invoice, prefer payment within 24 to 48 hours, unless they tell you otherwise. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, uh, what else? If there's an item you really want to try to claim, we offer an option over here on the Valentino is called Just In Case. And Just In Case is a special kind of bid. It's a bid that allows you to tell us what the maximum amount you'd be willing to spend on that item that you really want would be. If you are interested in putting in a Just In Case bid, you would type the letters J-I-C with that maximum amount you're willing to bid. And if you have the highest Just In Case before the end of the countdown before the bid end, we will bid you up just $1 over the next highest bid or the next highest just in case. So it's really an opportunity for you to maximize your chances of getting something that you really want. Now, if you use the just in case, we ask two things of you. The first, that you've already had at least one actual bid before your use of the just in case on that particular item and that your just-in-case bid only comes in during the countdown. If you uh, do put a just-in-case bid in before the countdown, we won't be able to recognize it and you'll need to put it again, in again once the countdown uh, begins. So if you are a successful claimant of an item tonight, we need some information from you because all four of us use PayPal to bill. There it is. All right. All right. I didn't know why you were raising your hand. You scared me no, for a minute. I got... I got confused. So, um, <laughs> so in order for us to generate a PayPal invoice for you, uh, we need these four pieces of information, your YouTube screen name, your real name, your shipping address, and your PayPal email address. Uh, and in just a moment, you will see our email addresses up on the screen. You can take a screenshot. Uh, they're also linked down in the description. Um, and you can e email all four of us right now if you've never bought from us. Uh, or you've only bought from some of us, you can email all of us right now in the same email and pre-register so that we have your information when we need it. Uh, so that information allows us to generate a PayPal invoice and you do not need a PayPal account to check out through PayPal. In fact, you can also use your Venmo account to check out through PayPal. Um, you can, uh, so, so we're gonna send you an email and in the email there's going to be a link. If you don't have a PayPal account, you just click on that link and it will take you to a screen where you can check out as a guest. Simple, simple, simple. If you have any questions about how the payment works, just message us after the sale. We'll be happy to help you with that. Um, the last thing I would say is that I think I remembered everything. My name's Bill, Garden Guy Bill. I ship from Northern New Jersey. Um, so it's important for you to know where we're shipping from so you can kind of estimate what the, the cost will be. All four of us also use an online shipping service called Pirate Ship. And Pirate Ship, while it sounds like it's insidious now that I think about it, if we're not pirates, Pirate Ship just allows us to get deep, deep discounts on shipping through the postal service or through UPS. Um, so, so that can benefit you, particularly if you live further away from where we are. Um, but Garden Guy Bill, I ship from New Jersey. I ship to the U.S. and Canada only. And I will be invoicing this weekend. And if you have any purchases from the Tupperware sale from yesterday, I will do my best to combine shipping. But those boxes get pretty big. Um, and I think that's it for me. How about you, John? I'm John. Everyday holiday displays. I ship, I got, ship out of Chicago, Illinois. Um, I will uh, start invoicing this weekend, likely Sunday. You'll always get a message from me when your invoice is ready. So there's no fears about missing it. Um, I had a sale on Tuesday. So if you bought anything during my sale on Tuesday over on Instagram, I will be combining that with the sales tonight. Back to you or over to you, Brian. All right. I'm Brian with Mid-Century Mister, and I ship from New York. 
Um, right now, I do have a packed weekend, so I probably will not be getting any invoices out till Monday evening. Uh, if you do have an open box with me, again, happy to come by, although I don't really think I have too many left at this moment. And um, I accept PayPal or Venmo. Kim, it's very funny that you were asking about John's background. If you watch us over on Instagram, when we quote film from Instagram, it's always reversed. So it's because we're using a device that flips our background. So actually, when you see John's background right now, you're seeing the way it really is. So when he's over on Instagram, the bookshelf is on his left shoulder. So um, just just a little caveat for I didn't, folks I didn't that, see that comment. <laughs> may not may not notice that, but yep. So. I'm Jason, Mother Tucker's Antiques. I ship out of the Keystone State, also known as Pennsylvania. Um, I will be doing all my invoicing on Saturday. That's when I invoice for all of my sales. And um, let's see here. So I'll be doing all my invoicing. If you guys purchase from any of my other sales, whether it be Monday night or Wednesday night, you have an open box. As long as I can combine the items safely, I will do so. I do offer free pickup at the brick and mortar. I have a shop here in central Pennsylvania. Um, if you're interested in um, using that, just let us know via email. And of course, we won't charge you for that. And then we'll communicate via email on when and how you want to pick it up once your invoice is paid. One quick side note, this week here in Adamstown, we have an extravaganza. So guys, if you're in the area, please come on down, support even more small businesses, support Mother Tuckers. I have about 35 small businesses under my roof. So if you're in the area, come on down. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I did see a few more people in the chat. We're going to say hello to, I think it was just one or two others, and then we're going to jump right into it so we can get the sale going. I don't know where, and I do want to mention, please make sure you're following our, our uh, friend Amy, Enamor Amy. I didn't say that earlier. Hello, Dawn. It's so good to see you. Hopefully you are doing well. Susan, I don't know if I said hello to you earlier or not, but I want to make sure that I say hello to you. There she is. Speaking of Mother Tucker's and a dealer, there's our friend Mary, who also has a booth in at Mother Tucker's. Um, and I think that was everybody I saw. So again, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We have a variety sale tonight, so everybody's going to have something different. I myself was trying to go with a space bewitched kind of theme. So we'll see how well I did with it. Maybe some of the other fellas can vocalize if they feel like they had a theme. If not, we're just going to jump into it. But Bill's going to start us off, and then we'll go Bill, John, Brian, and then myself. So how much is your first item starting at, Bill? $10, Jason, and I definitely themed myself because I work best with themes. So tonight, I just kind of calling it curiosities, um, and I only have two start prices tonight, $10 and $20. So um, this first one's going to start at $10. I have this awesome little mod kind of two-kitten planter. Um, it's fantastic. It's in really great condition. It is bisque. It's not glazed on the outside. So it does clean up really nicely with a magic eraser. But it's one of those things that like, even if your ring hits it, you're going to get one of those black lines on it. You just need to take the magic eraser and take it off. But as you can imagine, just based on the look of the, of the paint on the front, that we do have a, an amazing glower here. Um, it's really, really good. I do want to point out that when I put the black light on it earlier, I did see just a small, you can all, just barely see it there. There is a small line there on the back. And interestingly enough, the bottom is glazed. So I don't think it's ever held a plant. It is pretty uh, in pretty nice condition, but it's super, super cute, super kitschy, super mod. Um, and it has a size uh, and that size is four inches tall, five inches from side to side. It almost Super. has like a Hello Kitty kind of feel to it. Yeah. And I think you could definitely stretch this for Valentine's Day. It definitely, for me, you know, it does kind of look like it could fit into a nice, but particularly it, with what you use to stage around it, I think it would be really great for that. But this, these orange day glow flowers all over them. And then obviously the pink highlights, super, super cute. So yep, cute. meow, meow. Love it. Yeah, it is really good. Um, but uh, my rule when I'm with the Valentinos is I move it along. If we don't have any interest, we will bring it back at the recap. We do do a recap after the first 10 rounds. So uh, maybe you need to think about it. We'll see it again later on. 
All right, John. These are my uh, first item uh, starting at $24. I sort of did a theme, a loose theme of spring, um, but then some other things that kind of like went with that. I was, I find it easier to do a theme too. And when I'm putting together my previews, I like to do little displays. And so that kind of like dictates what I'm going to bring. I have the set of four tulip egg cups. These are by um, Chadwick Miller. They're from 1971. They all have their Made in Japan blue sticker on the bottom. You'll get all four of them. I don't believe these were ever used. You'll see, if you take a look at them, you might see some like imperfections or what you might see is like paint imperfections or a little roughness. That I believe is from the mold because mostly the glaze is over those moments. So um, I'll show you on the rose what I mean. You can kind of see a little bit of roughness there, but that's all under the glaze. It's just, the, and again, the way the, the mold was um use when making these so i've seen these sold separately for a bit uh money that i probably wouldn't pay for them i have them as a set so if you need one or you like all of them this is a pretty decent price i think for the set of four again by chadwick um miller i keep wanting to say chadwick bozeman which is not in, which is not correct chadwick miller the um four tulip egg cups patty i see you at 24 looking for 25 or more i'm gonna go ahead and keep us moving why not we got we got some time we got some other stuff to show you Looking for 25 or more, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid N, looking for 25 or more, the bid N from Karen Gillette. They do look great together. And that's why I honestly didn't want to separate them because I, I think they look, when you're doing displays and you can like pair them off or put them in a trio and one on the side. Um, if you saw my, my preview, I kind of did some of that. Karen, thanks so much for the bin. Patty, these are coming for 24. Thank you so much. I appreciate your bidding. All right. I have no co uh, cohesive theme tonight. I really went variety, and so I brought a bunch of different things. And just one public service announcement. If you hear my dog whining, he's down by my feet. I don't usually have him tonight, but uh, he's down with me tonight. So just I uh, wanted to share that with everybody in case you hear it's not It's not me. It's the dog. Uh, first yeah. item is going to start. Now, Brian, now everyone's going to want to see him. because I know. I know. Tiny. I know. Hold him up. Hold him up. you got to give him his that. 10 minutes. <laughs> I don't have a theme, but I have a dog. I will have a little bit. He's like, <laughs> he's he's in a, a state of wandering around. So he, he's, he's patrolling like, your house. Yeah. He's, he's making sure it's safe. He's not happy he's with me. So he usually gotcha. is not um, So I'm going to start at $30. And my first item is this Fire King Jedi Bowl. Um, it is the, if you're familiar with these bowls, it is the seven inch diameter and then 3.5 inches tall. Very good condition without any chips, cracks, or breaks. A very, very faint uh, few, you can kind of see it in the light there, utensil scratches. But that's the only thing I'm seeing in this particular piece here is a swirl pattern. Um, again, no chips, cracks, or, or breaks on it on the uh, rim anywhere and the the logo is good and clear on the bottom just looking for thirty dollars to start uh this is a, this is a, one of a series i think it's four um i don't know where in the series i think it's the next to smallest can't remember and the smaller they get the harder they are to find mm -hmm. that is true that yeah. is true. the tiny the tiny one is always the hardest that's not yep. that's not this one i believe so just looking for 30 to start if you're a jadeite fan I love jadeite in the spring, and I love when people mix it into their Christmas decor. This green with red, I think, is I think it's real kitschy and real 1950s. It's definitely. I think it was. It's become a little bit popular again. There was a period where I think it was sort of on the on the downward, but it's. I, I don't. It's not my. I don't collect it myself, but I know several people do, and and it's something I obviously look for when I'm out because I know a lot of people do like it, but like. Um, we like to keep it moving, so this will come back later on. All right, let me get myself over here. And my first round is going to start at $12 choice, but I need to do something first here. Let me scroll right up here really, really quick. And I'm going to interrupt our live sale because we're being sponsored tonight by the one, the only Gavin of Grady Group of Vintage Recordings. Gang, if you are not subscribed to our friend Gavin because a sale wouldn't feel like a sale if we didn't promote him and have you guys head on over to our YouTube DJ it's Grady Grupo Vintage Recording. So, guys, make sure you follow him because he plays music on vinyl on a turntable. He also spotlights things that they purchased from other sellers 
in this vintage community. So please do yourself a favor, head on over. If Karen could put the link in and make sure you follow Gavin over at Grady Group of Vintage Recordings, you will not be sorry. So $12 choice. And I have choice on these little glass candy containers, okay? I believe this is the original candy that is inside of them. Um, they were very popular in the 50s and the 60s. This is the little ray gun. So this kind of goes with my space theme. I'm trying to show you guys. It actually has little details on it here. So it actually looks like a little space gun. So there's the back of it. So it gives you more of like a 1950s kind of feel to it. I want to get my comments caught up. Bear with me, guys. So it will be $12 choice. This is so new old stock, it still has its little original paper label on it, okay? And these were made in a town called Jeanette, and the Jeanette Glass Company is located there here in Pennsylvania. So I really, really believe that Jeanette Glass is a company that made these little candy containers. So they're really fun, and there is some embossing that you can't see right here. It does say that it does contain sugar and something else like that. It's kind of like a little bit of what's in it. Those are just candy sugar pellets. That's basically what's in there. So this will be your first choice. A lot of times you don't find these with the original tin lid. They did make these up through the early 1980s. So this could be anywhere from the 60s to about the 1980s. So this little ray gun here measures about three and a half inches by two. So that's going to be your first choice. Technically new old stock because it still has its little paper label on it, which says where it was manufactured. Then I have what I was going to think is a little dog. Maybe he's your little space dog, but he also has his original paper around the lid. He's a cute little guy, and these are really collectible. And at $12, you usually can't find them at that price, plus when they have their candy in them. So um, you can tell, that, like I said, this guy still has his new old stock label on it right there. So Lisa, I see you in at 12. Thank you so much. Plus he has his tin lid and he measures, I covered up my measurements. He measures about two and a half inches tall. So, um, and again, you can empty the candy out if you want it to look more like the figure, you know, than the little candy container. And these are just fun to collect. They made automobiles. They made all sorts of different things. They made some banks, um, lots of fun things. And again, I don't find these that often anymore. So It'll be the choice between the uh, toy gun or it'll be the uh, little dog. So let's do a countdown. Uh, we have Lisa in at 12. We're looking for 13 or more just in case for active bidder. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, to one bid and know you're right, Susan. They didn't taste good because I vaguely remember that they used to sell it in the. Do you guys remember in the 70s and 80s they had a little plastic filled with this candy? Then you you know instead of it being glass. So there's the bid end. So it looks like Lisa, you get first choice. We're gonna call this one Ray because I think you can get filtered if you put in the word that I said. So this one's gonna be Ray and this one's gonna be Dog. So we'll call it Ray or dog, and you can take one or two, and I'll watch the chat, but you get first, you get choice at 12 if you want the little Ray or the dog, and I'll watch the chat, Lisa. Thank you so much for the bid, and we'll get you going, Bill. Thank you, Lisa. $10, Jason, and uh, continuing with my curiosities theme, I got to find this guy home. I think he's fantastic. I've got this ceramic decanter, and I picked it up because I thought he was super cool. Used to have a Japan sticker on the bottom. And I verified that online because it appears as though he's part of a set of pirate decanters. Um, but this guy was just looking so forlorn and lonely that I wanted to find him a home. I think he's perfect for a Father's Day present if you're thinking about that. And he is in great condition. As far as the ceramic goes, there's nothing wrong with him. I'm going to take his head off. I know when I take heads off of things, people get very uh, uneasy about that. So I'm announcing it because I do want to show you the condition of his cork. So I, I beheaded him. Um, so there is a little bit of cork loss uh, on this guy. Uh, I'm not sure anyone would be using it as a decanter these days, uh, but it's super, super clean on the inside. As you can see, it doesn't look like it's ever been used. Um, but I thought he was really cool. And, you know, he's got a lot of features. The more you look at him, the more you realize, obviously, he's got the eye patch and this kind of disgusted look on his face. But he's got a hook 
for a hand or like a claw or something. And then you look a little closer. He's bare chested. He's hairy chested. It's really, really funny. He's got some booze in his hand. Yeah, I think he does look a bit like Bluto, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe that's why I brought him because I did have like a faint cartoon theme running through tonight. Maybe that's why I picked him up. He does look like Bluto. Was it Bluto or Bruto? I think it was Bruto. I thought it was Blue. No, Bluto. Yeah, Bluto. Bluto, was it? Yeah. Okay. So some people are finding him a little sexy. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> it's like, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with a hairy chest. That's he's all the I bear have. pirate. <laughs> he's oh, bear my. Pirate. Oh. <laughs> oh, and I should tell you the size. He is, he's actually big. Uh, I remember measuring him. He's almost a foot tall. It's 11 inches tall. So he's big to sit in someone's man cave. Do you know what he'd be good for? He'd be great for a Father's Day gift. Yeah, that's what I you, you clearly didn't hear me earlier. No, <laughs> I guess I didn't hear you say that earlier. But um, did you see the little factoid that Karen just dropped? No. That he was Bluto and Bruto. Oh. They changed his name at one point. Okay. All right. All I right. Love that. I love that. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we'll get you going, John. Sorry, I, I'm i good. I'm all good. Everything's fine. Um, <laughs> um, like I said, lots of spring things. I have a few butterfly items. This is the first time I'm going to bring up. This is by Inesco. Now, it's not marked Inesco. And I didn't tell you the starting price. Starting price is going to be $22, Jason. Um, right. Inesco Japan. This does not have its sticker on it. But when I was doing my research, I found a larger version of this. So this would be the smaller version. The larger version is about seven inches. But that was marked in Esco Japan, and it's the same kind of design, the same kind of almost bone china kind of uh, finish and feel with the flower and a butterfly that was very similar. So confident that this is also in, es in Esco Japan. This planter measures four and a quarter inches high by four and three quarters inches long, and it's about two and a quarter inches wide, kind of as a boat shape. I don't know if it was ever used. It looks very clean on the inside, so my guess is no. I'm sure, like many folks, like myself, not like Bill, might just use them for decorative purposes and not so much for any planting, but you do you. Maybe Bill has inspired you to do more planting in your planters, and I'm here for that as well. I'm just a little shy about finally getting getting to it. Um, you can see the detail. The butterfly is really gorgeous. The paint color kind of as a purplish and then that lighter blue and kind of almost an olive green kind of rimming around there. And then the very edges is almost Kind of like a brownish black, I would say. So it's not, I don't think it's a full black. I think it's more of a brownish black, but on the black side of that. So on the darker side. Um, I don't see any condition issues, no chips or cracks or crazing on this. Um, just a little bit of schmutz from where a sticker used to be that I'm looking now at the ring light. Um, great, great condition other than that. So $22. Again, Inesco Japan, this butterfly flower, sweet for spring. Um, keep it up, you know, all year round. I know lots of people collect butterflies. My mom's a huge butterfly, butterfly collector, which you may have gotten from her mom because I know my grandma had a huge collection of butterflies and owls. The owls didn't make the transition to our house, but the butterflies definitely did. Um, but I don't see any interest on the butterfly by planter for 22. So I'll put this aside and uh, turn it over to Brian for his next round. Those colors are so vibrant on that, John. Yeah. So vibrant. My, mo my mother was a butterfly collector as well, John. I think it's definitely the, the time period. Exactly. Um, right? Yeah. I'm going to follow with another, another 22. All right. So I've yeah. got a pair of lucite candles. These are the smaller size. And they are eight inches tall. They are in very good condition. I'm not seeing any issues. Here's the wicks. So you guys could see those and around, back up a little bit, around the wicks. Um, I don't believe this foaming, uh, it's like a squishy material. It probably was somebody put around it, probably sticky on one side and they, they wrapped it around so it sits in the candle holders. I think that will come off if somebody wants to remove that, but I have a feeling it would actually help with most candle holders. So very good condition, no chips, cracks, or breaks. Again, these are the smaller size um, compared to what is normally seen. Uh, I've, I've seen this size in red. I have a pair myself. I'm, I'm not sure if they made all the colors in the smaller size, but um, I, know, I know they make others if um, you like this size over the larger ones. But again, the wicks, a little bit of fraying on this one in particular. This one is not frayed. No damage around the tops of them as it something is. happened. No chips. Um, so that's what we're that's what we're looking at here. Eight again, eight inches. If you're just joining us, uh, there's the bottoms. 
clean, no issues, no chips, no damage to them. Aaron, I see you at 22. Thank you very much. Uh, nice gold flex throughout them. They're clear. Obviously, they're clear, but they're like the clear has not gotten cloudy. Um, really good shape overall. And I'm here for the fact that those rings are on the bottom because sometimes yeah, trying to get yeah. them to fit or even find anything, it's already there. You can pop them right into the candlestick holders as soon as you get them. And surprisingly, this is I, like there's some toys that were made of this kind of like spongy type material that often um, disintegrated, but these are still holding up strong. So I think I saw Steel Whisper and then Karen, I see you at 25. Let's go ahead. We'll get the countdown started. I'm sorry, are we doing 20 or 15? 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So sometimes 26 or a bit in. Sorry, John. Sometimes StreamYard just boop, you're gone. <laughs> it's never happened to me. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Karen, yeah. just in case of 35. Thank you very much. There it is. And there's the bid end. You didn't need it. So these are coming to you for 25. Thanks, Karen. Appreciate it. All right, guys. I didn't preview any of these, and it'll be $14 choice. They're going to be on necklaces. So they have pendants on them. And I loosely, or Tina helped me loosely pick some that we thought were Sputnik style or I Dream of Genie style. And this one I thought looked very Sputnik. Now, this will be your first choice at $14. Now, those like pink, almost orange colored stones fluoresce under black light. So this is like a 1960s brooch. And the center part is metal and the little top beads are like a little plastic. Okay. So it's this fun 1960s, like Sputnik style, almost disco ball, uh, little pendant. So, and the chain on it measures about 18 inches. So there you go. You can see that they're just lighting up for you guys, but underneath black light, they actually fluoresce in pink. So if you wanted to add this and hang this in your, Black light display, those little uh, rhinestones in there that are reading a little orange on your screen, they will fluoresce pink. So, and then the original chain is in white. So the little pendant itself measures, if I have my measurement here, just about an inch and a quarter. So this is really fun. And you can see they actually antiqued it with a little bit of gold. So it has that, you know, very 19... 60s feel so that's not paint wear that's in gold and it is metal but the two little uh balls on the top and the bottom they are made of like a plastic so and then you will get the chain and then it is your little um it's your little clasp here right there's your clasp and it does secure it does shut very securely so your other choice this was new to me when tina showed these to me this is your double pendant so I was thinking that the stones in here kind of look like if you were looking down from space on earth or they kind of look like moonstones, this is going to be your double owl uh, necklace. So they are attached together. So you get one large one and you get one small one. So then here is the closure on that. The chain on this one measures about, what was the, it's about 18 to 20 on that. Jason, then, do the pendants remove from the chains? Do the pendants? Yes, you could remove them if you wanted to. You would have to take that little jump ring out if you wanted to. So you could take the little jump ring off and you could remove them if you wanted to. So you can see that right there. Now, this, this was apparently very much in fashion. Thank you so much, Sherry. I see you at 14. This was very much in fashion where um, they would do different animals and they would do two like this. So... Um, but you are going to get both of those little, and they are metal. There's no name. So this is definitely costume jewelry. And the rhinestones are like a bluish green in those eyes. They do not glow, uh, but it's like the jelly belly almost when it comes to the costume jewelry. So, and then this chain measures almost 20 inches, so almost 20 inches. And I believe this is the original chain to the piece. And let me show you the backs of them. That's what the backs look like. And the pink one, these are not pink, but the first one I showed you, the little rhinestones in the first one I showed you, they will fluoresce pink under black light. Yes, they are choice. So your choice will be either the owl pendant, the owl necklace. 
So that'll be one of your choices. And uh, Susie, I think uh, Suzette, I think you're lagging just a little bit because we're in at 14. We're looking for 15. So guys, please make sure you refresh if you're lagging. There you can see when they're not under black light, they are orange. And the other ones are almost like a, oh, they're almost like a, like a light olive almost. Then when you put it under black light, the ones that are reading orange on your screen, they will fluoresce pink. I don't and know Jason, how well. Is that pendant removed as well? People are asking. Yes, you can remove it. Yes, you can take the little hook off. You can actually see where it's like a little claw hook. So you could remove it. Let's see what it wants to show detail wise. So you can see yeah, right can there. See yep, you could remove it if you wanted to. So if you wanted to repurpose this in your Barbie dream house, so she has a glowing disco ball, you could definitely do that. You could craft with it, but I think it's very like late 1960s, that like um, laughing kind of era, you know, heading into the disco, Sputnik, all that great 19. Uh, it, it speaks very mod, you know, when they were saying, you know, the stem lights, the tool up tables, that kind of era, then in jewelry. So that's your first choice. We're in at 14. We're looking for 15. So Suzette, if you were interested, you'd have to come in at 15. And then your other choice is going to be the double owl pendant. So let's go ahead and do a countdown. We are doing just in case for active bidders. Suzette, thank you. I see you in at 15. Guys, I got a feeling uh, YouTube's acting a little weird tonight with a lag. So you might want to refresh. So um, hopefully I answered all those questions. I tried to do my best and learn from Tina. So we'll count down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. I got to tell you, this one's one of my favorites. I've never seen another fun piece of jewelry like that, even in all my years of Tina selling costume jewelry. So it'll be choice between the owl. And then the other one we'll call pendant. So it'll be pendant or owl. There's the bid end. Thank you so much, Karen G. So Suzette, you have first choice at fifteen dollars. Uh, I'm trying to see who had the first bid. Sherry, you'll have backup. So Suzette, you just have to let me know. Did you want the owls? Did you want the owls or did you want the pendant? So we're calling that one pendant or owls, and you can take both if you were interested in both. But owls or pendant. That's going to be your choice on the necklaces. And then you want both. Congratulations. They're both yours. Thank you so much. And let's get you going, Bill. Thank you, guys. Two dollars, Jason. And I have a choice round. In fact, I limited my choice rounds tonight simply for this round because I have six to choose from. Um, and we typically don't do that. But I needed to save these from probably destruction. And this is a niche item. I understand uh, there may no, be nobody here tonight who collects something like this, but I had to try to uh, find a home for them before they go up on vamp. I found six um, Franklin Mint uh, cartoon plates and they feature the Flintstones. Um, they are eight inches across and they are from the early 1990s. They are limited edition, uh, licensed by Hanna-Barbera, uh, Franklin Mint collectible plates. Each plate still comes in its original um, original styrofoam uh, styrofoam container. Um, and they, as I said, they are a, they are limited edition and they are numbered. So I'll show you them quickly, just in case there's anybody who is interested. So the first one, which is the oldest one, this is 1992, um, is the are the two families actually in the, the Flintstone mobile or whatever we call it. Uh, and uh, Dino is chasing them. The next one, Fred just got home from work. So Dino is uh, welcoming him home. This is 1994. The third one, I love this one. I don't know if these are actually scenes from the cartoon. I don't remember any of them. This one is called Modern Stone Age Woman. And we see Wilma in the kitchen reading a magazine while the animals are doing the dishes, which I think is super fun. That's 1994 as well. 
Then we have this one, it's called Where's Fred? Everyone down at the bottom is looking for Fred, but he's up in the hammock, strung between the necks of these two dinosaurs, which is also super cool. Uh, this is a 1995 plate. Uh, Fred and Barney playing golf, 1995, super cute. The poor little bird is the birdie or the tee holding the, um, holding the rock as a golf ball. And then this is the cutest one. This is Pebbles and Bam Bam at a tea party and Bam Bam does not look like he wants to be there. He is, he is an unwilling participant in this tea party. This one is also from 1995. Again, they are all numbered and signed on our numbered and, uh, uh, officially licensed on the back. So um, we have the tea party, we have golf, we have uh, Fred lounging in a hammock, Wilma's in the kitchen, Dino's greeting Fred, and the family in the car. And I didn't know this, but did you know the Flintstones are considered the first family of animation? Yeah, apparently that's the title that they've been given, the first family of animation, which I think is really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a countdown. Thank you for people being interested. I, this was a risk for me, but they are super, super great. And they're in amazing condition. Yes. Patty's so, right. Um, Patty's that? right. They're loosely based on the honeymoon. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that countdown. Um, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. So Sharon just said her brother was an animator. Animation has always perplexed me because didn't they have to draw like the same thing just slightly different, uh, like a zillion times? Mm -hmm. Who's got time for that? An animator. Yeah, easy. I know. I guess so. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Patty. You have first choice. Freddie Fines has backup at 20. So, Patty, I'm no, just going to make Bill, are you seeing it different on your screen? Because Patty came in after the bid end. So, you have Freddie in at 20 with a just in case. Uh, I'm seeing it on my phone. Okay. Uh, StreamYard showing it differently. So, um, then, then it's... Uh, it's not at 20 either. It would be at 17. 17. Yeah. Sorry, Bill. That's what we're seeing on StreamYard here. No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, so it's Freddie Fines at 17. So we have uh, Pebbles and Bam Bam. Uh, we have Golf. We have, um, yeah, Pat, I see Patty before too, but we have to go with what Jason sees. Uh, the Mailbox. We have Hammock. We have um car and we have kitchen so hopefully that was good enough for you to let me know which ones you wanted one or i know one. i know guys it normally doesn't filter differently like that but this time in our stream yard it shows that uh patty came in after the bid ad so freddie we're or freddie finds we're gonna go with what jason sees so you have first choice you want Pebbles and Bam Bam. Fantastic. So, Jason, can you just let me know who's next? Yes, it will be Steel at 16. Aren't you seeing the same thing on your screen in the chat in StreamYard? No. Okay. Well, then I'm going to take a photo of it. So, Oh, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Um, so who, who are we waiting for now? You're waiting. I have it highlighted. You're waiting on Steel. Steel, yep. Steel for 16. So... Pebbles and Bam Bam. And then after Steel, Patty wasn't in anywhere at all. So we're just waiting on Steel Whisper to tell us what she wants. Pebbles and Bam Bam was claim steel, but I still do have family car. So you can have family car. And I don't know if there's anyone else, Jason. Sharon, was it 15? She, we already got her. We already, yeah, oh, Sharon sorry. Already, yeah. I'll just so, shut up. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. And usually StreamYard doesn't do this. And I'm so sorry. I just have, I, usually you guys should be seeing the same thing I'm seeing here in StreamYard, but our phones could be different. So, um, yeah, I'm so sorry, Patty. 
and I took a picture to show what StreamYard, and it'll hold a record here on my end. So those are the only two that you have, Bill. Well, it looks like um, Deborah was in at 11. Do you see that? Hang on here. Let me go back. Yes, you do. You have Deborah at 11. Yep. Okay, Sharon. Yes, you can have Wilma as well. So, Deborah, if you wanted any of the ones left, I had the hammock, I had the mailbox, and I had golf. And, of course, you can pass if you would like. All right, guys, we can move it along. We'd spend enough time on this. Sorry about that. It's, it's, all good. it's, it's the Internet. So following Bill's round, I have, I have, it's just one item, but it's kind of also niche and it has a higher start price. This is going to start at $42. So starting at 42 niche, because this is the Garfield uh, Gemini uh, Zodiac uh, figurine. So they had a whole series of these in 1981 from UNESCO Garfield in different positions and different things that uh, were reminiscent or related to the, the month of the Zodiac signs. So this is a, a Gemini for May from May 21st to June 20th, I'll read you what it says. It says, entertaining, versatile, witty, logical, spontaneous, and charming, the kind of person you would love to hate. Because that's Garfield, right? Garfield's always a little bit snarky, a little bit, you know, skeptical of everyone else around him. Is it really quite the cat that you think you would be? Um, and we loved him for a time, right? He was like a huge part of my childhood, some of yours out there too. Um, these measure four and a quarter inches tall by three inches wide by two inches deep. Um, there is a small kind of hairline right there. Now it's not structural. Like I, I barely can, I mean, I barely, barely, barely feel it, but it's not coming through like to the bottom or anything like that. So I do want to point that out. And then the only other condition thing to note um, is a little bit of paint loss right there, like a tiny little bit of a, I don't know, like a ding or a flea bite off the top right there on the back. And then a little bit of roughness right on the edge of the ear, but overall in good condition. These are very collectible. I was surprised at, I don't know if they didn't make very many of them or if people didn't buy many of them. Um, certain months go much higher, certain much, months are a little bit lower. Um, so I did some looking and kind of did an average for what I thought the Gemini was going for. I love the fact that, you know, Geminis have the two kind of sides and they did kind of uh, Garfield with two two heads. So that was kind of, was kind of cute. Um, but again, even the UNESCO thing, I've got a lot of UNESCO in the sale. So weirdly, and I don't think that was even a plan. It was just, again, one of those kind of themes that were kind of like a sub theme just based on the items I'd picked for other reasons. Uh, but I don't see any interest on Garfield. So Garfield will be put to the side and brought back for the recap back to you or over to you, Brian. Put Garfield in the corner. There you go. <laughs> A quick side story, John. At my yard sale this past summer, uh, we had a Garfield latch hook kit. And this young kid comes along and he he picks it up and he, he buys it. And I'm like, this kid is way too young to ha really know who Garfield is. And he told us his grandfather was the one of the animators. So he was. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's he awesome. picks it up. Yeah, he picks stuff up whenever he sees it um, for the family. That's sweet. Yeah. That's it's fun. Cool. So. Uh, I'm kind of going also niche here, and my starting bid is going to be $60. And what I'm bringing here is more sculptural now, but this is a Royal Hager mermaid. It was a lamp, uh, Royal Hager made mermaid lamps. Um, but this particular piece obviously has no more uh, light socket at the top. I have the original socket, but when I obtained this, uh, the cord was already cut, the, the hardware was rusted. So I kind of said, you know what, I'm gonna take it apart. So take the bad parts off, so to speak, and have the sculpture remain. So you could still turn it into a lamp very easily. It's got the hole at the top. Uh, the one condition issue I do wanna note here, it's, it's I, I, I'm pretty positive it's a layer of paint that is chipped off but it could also have been missed in the manufacturing, but I'm kind of leaning mostly towards it being paint that chipped off. So she was a TV lamp, um, great condition otherwise, other than, again, this particular spot here. Uh, she measures 15.5 inches tall and about eight inches wide. So these were not made, uh, or these are more on the rarer side in terms of Royal Hager pieces and, and their particular um, TV lamps. Bill was helping me do a little research on this and we could only find one selling, was it 2007? 
bill, right? Yeah. The last the last one stole at 2007 that we could find. So she doesn't come up very often. If you have a mermaid ma- bathroom, she would fit perfectly in, in that theme on a shelf. So just looking for $60 to start again. If you have skills and you could you could easily turn her back into a lamp, uh, considering that the original hardware was already destroyed on her anyway. I have I've yet to rewire a lamp, but I hear it's not that hard to do. No, not at all. No. She definitely is larger. Uh, I recognize it's a unique piece, but if you are into mermaids, those look like a little spot under the nose. Brian, seems that you have all the hardware missing, the money the folks will save on the shipping, you can buy the parts to convert her into a lamp very easily once Good you point. see her. Yeah. Uh, she originally, from what I've seen in older pictures, had a fiberglass frame frame shade on top of it, like a two-tier one I've seen. Um, so just if that helps anybody with visualizing what it may have looked like. I rewired a ceramic tree lamp like thing. So all I did, I got the kit from Amazon and then I watched a YouTube video. I mean, it's it got, easy, easy. very easy. It's, it's already open at the bottom. You don't have to do anything of that nature. But uh, we'll bring her back. I knew it was uh, a more of a niche type of piece. Uh, and you could think about it. She's phenomenal. And Brian, just one, what color is the base, the shell she's sitting sure. on again? It is, I, I think it's like a maroonish color. Okay. It's, it may be reading a little bit more red, but I think it's more maroon in person. Okay. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. All right, guys. My next item is going to start at $30, and mine's a little unique with the space theme tonight. I always call these little bolos, but these are little handkerchief um, holders, so they would go around your neck. And from what I gather, uh, scouts back in the day could earn merit points, and then they could... Uh, purchase these or get these by doing certain things and certain activities. So this is really fun if you guys are into space themes. So again, you would uh, right here, you would slide the handkerchief down and it becomes like a bolo so then they can wear it there around the neck. Here on the back, it is actually stamped. I've never heard of the company. It's Torchy Plastics and it's embossed right here in the back. Torchy's Plastics. Um, I was only able to find one example of this on eBay and it was well more than what I'm starting it at. So if you guys are looking for a fun plastic piece, if you are into space, if you're into rockets, if you're into boy scouting kind of things, this might be a fun piece for you. It measures about two and a half inches in diameter. There is a little bit of paint wear, uh, but again, this is probably from what I could date, the information I could find it was from the late 1950s through the early 1960s. So this could be used in... Uh, just as a little tchotchke to, you know, put around. Um, you could put it into your space collection. You could probably repurpose it for something else, but it is going to start at $30 because these do not come around all that often. So there you can see the embossing on the back. And again, like I had just said earlier, the bit of research that I was able to find is, is that they would earn merit badges or they would earn an ability to have one of these different ones, and then they would be allowed to wear it because they earned that right to do so. Outside of that, I guess it had to be, you know, the traditional scout kind of thing. So there's a little bit of wear there to the hand, a little bit there on his cheek. But again, it's really different. The fact that the rocket is like a red burgundy color, and then you have the moon there behind him. I just think this is really, really fun. So two and a half inches in diameter. Again, this would have been for a neckerchief. Uh, around their neck, and then you would slide the two ends in. In essence, it's one of those bolos, so it would have been for around the neck as part of their um, attire. So just really fun piece, really different. Um, I had only found uh, one, uh, seen one other like this in person than the one I have, and then there is one on uh, eBay right now. So they didn't have much more information to offer. And even with a Google search, it didn't give me much more to offer. But great details, definitely fits the era. Again, this is really, really fun, especially if you're into the scouting stuff or if you are into, you know, the mid-century kind of space, rocket themes. Um, I could see you using this for all sorts of different things in your attire. So I don't see any interest. That's okay. I know $30 seems a lot for a small little plastic piece, but these don't come around that often. I have to imagine they would have been easily broken, discarded, and not kept. So 
We'll bring him back in the recap so you guys can think about it, or maybe you want to research a little bit about it, but uh, it'll be $30 on the little bolo, or also known as the little neckerchief uh, holder around the neck. So we'll move it over to Bill, and we're going to keep moving. All right, Mr. Bill. $10, Jason. And um, I picked this before I knew Jason was bringing that. So somewhat related, I have a oversized coloring book, Merrill Publications from 1930. 38. It's old, but it, and it's huge, as you can see. And it's called A Boy's Own Coloring Book. And it's got all of those things that of the time they believed boys would be interested in or important for boys. The cover is amazing for being 1938. There's a little bit of discoloration up here at the top, as you can see, and a little bit of bending at the corner and just a tiny bit coming up here at the corner. But other than that, it's in really good condition. About, I will say, though, yeah, 86 years old, uh, someone, little boy or little girl, some little person did color some of the pages, and they did quite a good job. I would say about 30% of the pages in here are colored. It's a really big book. It's a, As you can see, it's a really thick book, so I didn't count how many were colored, but there are still many, many that are not colored. Um, I just think that the, the lines and the graphics are so great. All the different sort of adventures that they put in here that they thought boys would be interested in. Uh, it's super great. Um, a super great book. Um, what else did I want to say about this? Yeah. Merrill Publishing, Chicago, Illinois, 1938. They even colored, they even colored the little front illustration. Super cool. So kind of related to the Boy Scoutish thing that, um, oh, thank you, Susan. That's very sweet. I work hard on keeping these plants happy. <laughs> uh, around the same kind of theme that Jason just brought with the Boy Scouts. All right. We'll get you going, John. Um, I'm, 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 yeah. um, we're going to start at $10 for choice. I have a choice of um, following Bill's round of kind of ephemera. I have a choice run on some uh, vintage postcards. John, hold on a minute. Just wait one second. We'll 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 get Bill back over. Deborah's in at 10 for his coloring book. I'll just take it as a claim, Jason. All right. All right. Then we'll get you back over, John. $10 choice. Sorry about that. So, uh, no, that's totally fine. Uh, these are both birthday postcards. I'll start with the one that says birthday greetings. Um, you can see that they're embossed. They've got this great color. There's a little bit of uh, dog earring on that one corner at the top. Um, this is from 1910. So in my quick math, that's 114 years. Crazy to think that. Um, three and a half by five and a half inches. Like I said, it is postmarked 1910 on the back. Very a uh, little bit of like not really a message on here, just someone's sort of address. And then <laughs> someone just wrote their name. It just says this side for correspondence, this five side for address. I don't really know. It's from something in, in Illinois, August 1st, 1910. So just shy of 114 years, 113 years on this one. This is your first choice starting at 10, the embossed uh, birthday greetings postcard again. Following my theme of kind of spring and butterflies and flowers, that's why I picked this. And then your second choice is this gorgeous one, a happy birthday. Um, this is printed in Germany. That's what it says on the back. This one's a little bit smaller than the other one, just, just a tiny bit. It's still three and a half inches by about five and a quarter. What's cool about this one is beyond the embossing of the butterfly, these pieces right here, the kind of flanking pieces, are flocked. So that's a flocking that they did kind of a red and a pinkish color right there. Then you've got it flanked by the roses. Again, kind of it just says compliments of some woman and then sent to her friend, I believe. This one does not have a postmark, but like I said, it does have that printed in Germany um, mark on the back of it. So two choices on these great vintage postcards. I know some people get hung up on the things that they say on postcards or cards or green cards or ephemera. I do not. I'm all about the design. You don't have to do a birthday display to have them displayed, especially when they look as gorgeous as this. So $10 choice on either the birthday greetings, which is kind of a, a vertical card, or the happy birthday, which is more the horizontal. But I don't see any interest on both of these, and I will put them aside, and you'll see them again in the recap. Over to you, Brian. Jason, 38 start bid. I am bringing this flower pixie um leaf dancer i've seen her listed a few different ways there's this is a series uh so either flower petals or leaves these were made by acme she is in very good condition with no chips cracks or breaks to her um a little bit of gold paint wear on the cold paint that was on the on her her feet here but otherwise 
And I think the rest of the paint is actually under the glazing, except for the gold shoes. And she measures four inches tall. And on the bottom, it is stamped made in Japan, but it does not have the Acme name on it, but these are made by Acme. And there's, there's a, a variety of like, I think four or five that I've seen. Somebody, somebody, you guys might know better how many there are, but I've seen like four different ones. When I saw this in your, I've never seen her before. And I saw oh, her in your reel and I was like, what is this? I need to know about it. And it's not surprising that it's made by Acme because Acme made a ton of the uh, pixie planters. Okay. Yeah, there's, yep. um, they're, they're different poses. They're not all in this pose, which makes sense, of course, but um, different colors. I think there's an orange one, a green one, a uh, yellow one, if I'm remembering correctly. And I feel like Amy has brought something similar to this or like this. And I, I feel like she knows a little bit more about this. Um, Fingers are all there. I think it's super cool. I love the sleeves. The sleeves for yeah. me dragging on the ground. I, I, when I saw it in your, in your preview, I was just kind of struck by it. A lot of what I saw, they they do attribute them to Pixies, although I know Pixie is an overused word. Um, to me, she does look kind of more just like a girl, to be honest. But they were flat Pixie leaf dancers I saw several times. She's a forest nymph. That's what she Forest is. nymph, yes. Yep. John, you're on mute. It's like she's emerging from the flower or something. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like she's coming up out of it. But it doesn't seem like we've got interest, so we'll keep things moving. I love her. She's amazing. And you don't see her that often at all. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, if you aren't following the fellows on the screen, please make sure you subscribe to either their YouTube channels or follow them over on Instagram. They're all hardworking fellas uh, that also are resellers. So please make sure you give them a follow. Um, keeping with my thing for the evening, if I'm doing I Dream a Genie, I have to bring what kind of started the whole genie bottle thing was the fact that I remember reading some of that the creators actually used this gin bottle as their design for her original genie bottle. So $48, they usually sell for a lot more, especially when they have the uh, label on them still. So this is from the 1960s. It is a glass gin bean bottle. It is like their genie bottle. Thank you, Steel. I see you in at 48. Uh, the stopper is in it pretty securely, so I'm not going to pull it out. Sometimes the uh, corks in there start to disintegrate, so I don't want to disturb it. It's in there very uh, good, and it's uh, very sturdy. So it does have the original seal, and I do believe when I was looking close, I believe it is the Pennsylvania seal. Yes. Back here, it has the little keystone there in green. So it is the Pennsylvania seal uh, for the liquor container. And again, here is your original Jim Bean on the front. Now, it is a smoke color. That is the color um, that they attribute to the I Dream a Genie one. Sometimes you find the blue one with the handle. You'll find the other ones that has a handle, but it is this one. In the light, it does read smoked. Sometimes when the light hits it, it has almost a light olive kind of tone to it. But nonetheless, it's a real fun bottle. There's no chips. There's no cracks to it. Again, the stopper is in it very securely, so I don't want to really disturb it. It measures 14 inches tall. So um, I also want to say I feel like these were made in Empoli, but I can't tell you that for sure because it isn't stamped at. But it is definitely a liquor bottle because it is stamped with all the federal uh, security things on the bottom. And again, this is really, really fun. This actually came out of our collection. I was really excited. Thank you so much. Well, wait, F yep, 53 uh, buttermilk and cream. I was really excited back in the day to find one of these. I should have said something to Bill because he actually has, who created, they remade it and actually painted it like the Gina Yeah, we have, we have the official reproduction, the, the official licensed reproduction. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't remember who made it though. Was it like a Danbury Mint or something redid yeah. it like that? I'll go grab it real quick and check. Okay. They're really, really fun. I should I wanted to say something to Bill since that I was doing the I Dream of Genie because these are fun knowing that there's a whole story. If you guys Google the whole story, I think it was like the producers or something. They kind of procrastinated on coming up with the bottle and they just saw this, went with it or sent a fella out to get it. And then they painted it up. The props uh, department painted it up, which it was a Jim Bean bottle. And then that's what became her bottle and pretty much I think that was one of the main characters in my remembrance of I Dream a Genie was the colorful genie bottle that she lived in. So I wanted to, to live in the bottle. 
So did I. It was there here, Bill. There, uh, yeah. My gosh. So yeah, you can see. Yeah. Does it say who made it, Bill, on the bottom at all? Just by chance? Oh God, that those graphics are so fun. Uh, it's under license from Sony Pictures. That's what it's okay. Sony. All right. Man, that's so fun. Thank you, Bill, for sharing that. That's so fun. So, but this is the original that started it all. So this was the uh, child that morphed into kind of what Bill has. So we are in at 55. Thank you all for the bids. We're looking for 56. Let's go ahead and count this down. There is no issues with it. And we can offer just in case if you're an active bidder. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. Steel right now has the top bid at 55, so we're looking for 56 or more. On the 1960s, uh, Genie Bottle, Liquor Bottle from Jim Bean. Very good condition, original labels, cork still intact. I'll ship it tight so the stopper stays in. And I'm happy that it's finding a new home. So there's the bid end. Thank you so much, Karen G. Steel had a 64, but Nikki had a just in case of 127. So Nikki, the bottle is yours for $65. Thank you so much. All right, Bill. I should be clear that that's not part of my collection. And if I sold that tonight, the divorce papers would be filed in the morning. So <laughs> no, that's not for sale tonight. All right, $20, Jason. And continuing in my curiosities theme, uh, a lot of you know I'm addicted to these carnival prize dolls. I love them so much. And I found one that I'd never had before, but I'm going to issue an alert. Um, if you're sensitive to to people who hang around circuses, you want to you wanna just be careful here because this one actually has a really cool, I think, a really cool clown face. Um, it's also a bit smaller than the typical carnival prize dolls are. Um, and I believe it's a bit newer. I don't think it dates back to the 30s. It does have a satin bodice here. So I, I know it's, pro it's probably like 1950s, but I think it's probably when they, you know, toward the end of when they stopped making these as prizes, because quite frankly, they were probably too expensive. Do you think she looks evil? I don't know. She Maybe. looks like Helga. She reminds me of Helga back in the day. He's got Helga back. He does. I do have Helga back. I, do have Helga. You, I gotta hear the story later on how it ended up back. So um uh 17 inches tall. They typically are between 25 and 29 inches tall, uh, and they're usually a bit wider. But if you don't know about these, these were given away at carnivals uh, when when you won a prize, and they were uh, made from scraps from the uh, from the uh, what's it called, the garment industry. So at the at the end of the day, when there there were extra scraps, the carnival people would go and uh, pick them up and hire a seamstress to make all these. Uh, all these uh, carnival prizes for them. This one's in really good condition. As you can see, the stitching is still in excellent condition. A lot of times they do come separated. Uh, no stains, no odors, just this one was really cared for. Um, and I love this, <clears throat> this two colored bow. I don't know if the, I don't know if the ribbon is original. It looks good with it. I don't know if it's original, but I knew not everyone would be up for clou clowns. That's why I have my curiosity theme tonight. Um, Chris just got home. If he sees that I have the genie bottle out, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put it under the table. Just give me a minute. Oh, don't, <laughs> don't, don't kick it. Don't kick it. It's metal, actually. It's not oh. glass, believe it or okay. not. Yeah. So um, we will go ahead and uh, bring this back at the recap. <laughs> All right. Um, starting at $24, Jason, a bit of a palate cleanser. Um, can't get more opposite oh. <laughs> what Bill had than this. Um, <laughs> This is a Fenton milk glass, uh, milk or bud base in the thumbprint design. This measures eight inches high. At the base, it's two and a half inches. It is not stamped, so we know that's pre-1972. You don't see the thumbprint uh, design as often. The thumbprint is basically my favorite um, design. Other than there's another one, I think maybe it's called Constellation by Indiana Glass um, in milk glass. So I love this to sort of nod to what nod to Jason's theme. It's very 
it has very moon vibes to me whenever I do my kind of moon day displays or or space displays. I always try to bring in some of this or that other um, Indiana Glass version, but $24, very simple. I think what's at the top, there are a couple of what I think are ash marks because um, they don't come off on the very lip of it. You're probably not gonna be able to see them, um, but just note that there are a couple of specs right there at the top, um, but just very simple, great for spring. Um, use it as designed. Also, I always like to say, if you don't have fresh flowers, there are great faux flowers out there now. I had some in my preview. They look like real flowers if you're not capable or don't have the time or don't have the money to, you know, spend on, on real flowers. flowers. Faux, faux flowers have done really well and they last um, forever, basically. So eight inches tall, Fenton thumbprint design. Very simple um, for spring and then well into the rest of the year. Like Jason said, lots of these things that we have um, can use for other seasons. This looks great in Christmas time too. If you've got a nice little sprig of something um, to, to decorate with um, for your displays during that time of year. But um, $24 start on this. I'll put this aside, bring it back for the recap. Over to you, Brian. Okay, I got a $15 choice. And the choice is all the same, but I have five of these Fire King Concord base mugs, blue color. So looking for $15 for choice. They're all in very good condition without any damage in terms of cracks or breaks. Um, so five, this is a little bit on the rarer side in terms of Fire King mugs. These don't come up very often. And I happen to have someone's collect original collection of there probably was six but um i i received five and they are 3.5 inches tall and in i guess a very good condition overall fire king stamped on the bottom of all of them oh my god that's an amazing star price on these you guys oh, like, i want these so bad. Like, I don't don't anybody buy them for me, but they're amazing. They're amazing. <laughs> like, like these mugs are some of the hardest designed Fire King mugs to find. I only, I think I was one of the first ones, believe it or not, to, to bring to an Instagram sale where these Concord mugs and really? um, like they made them in ombre. They made them in like a few designed ones. They did the speckled ones, but to find them in this blue... And the I've first one I the first one I ever bought, Jason, was from you. That's right. Like, there's a sharp, there's like a chartreuse green color. Did you just say that or no, or no? Yeah, there is like a chartreuse green, and yeah, because I remember I wanted to bring a mug that no one else had brought before, and honest to God, these and what's the other Fire King mug, John? That's hard to uh, find. It's the one that has the circles on it. Um, oh, the Camelot. Yes, the Camelot and these are two of the hardest designed Fire King mugs to find. Yeah. God, flower power. And that actually plays with like my space kind of theme with the color and the base. Yeah, like, like very moon rock looking, right? Or something. Does not seem like we've got interest. We'll keep it moving. We got lots to get to. Hello, that Viv. Welcome to YouTube. Hello. Viv, I think, has been over here once or twice before, but it's good. Oh, we got Robin. We got Robin. You know, these also go good with the Horizon Blue. This blue would play well with oh, your I, That's one of my top Pyrex patterns. Yeah. Like, if you do the Horizon Blue, ironically, had to do with space, yeah. yep. would go well with it. So, yeah, we have five. For, so, as many as somebody's interested in, you could take one or all five. Let's go ahead. We'll get a countdown started. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So looking for 16 or the bid end. I love John's mug tonight, actually. we didn't, I don't think we've made any comments about that yet. But Which that's one? Done. Which one? The striped one. Oh, you changed oh, because I have the changed it already. The the one you had to start. That one, yeah. Yeah, that one's really good. So I have Rob, the one in the orange not, color. Um, my, I'm not able to type in the comments, but Robin, if you want to let us let me know how many you uh are interested in, you can take one or all five. All right. So Robin, just let Brian know how many you want, and you said again, there's up to how many? It's up to five. Up to five. Okay. All right. 
I'm going to get going. We'll watch in the comments and we'll wait to hear from Robin. I got this little weirdo that we're going to start at $30. So um, he can go for upwards of three times this. Um, Bill, you want to share? Do you want any of them? No. They're, they're all yours, Robin. They're all yours. Nope. Robin, if you want them all, you can claim them all. Bill doesn't want any. So uh, this is a little series that came out in the late 1950s, early 1960s. This is a Knickerbocker stuffed animal. He is called a moon monkey. So he has one condition issue. He is missing one of his little pom-poms here on the top, okay? And he does have like a little bit of discoloration and a little bit of wear, but he does have his original. He was he was he was introduced by Art Link Letter and he was one of the moon nicks and he is the uh, moon monkey. So the original paperwork, he's he, it shows the other little ones that you guys could purchase. And the one I have is the one up there in the upper corner. And can you believe they were five dollars each back in the day? And there is a series of these. Um, this little booklet alone sells for um, a good amount of money on eBay if you have it, um, because folks have this plush and don't have it. So uh, we all know he Art Inkle Art Link Letter. He, uh, gosh, he. What show was it that he? The kids say the darndest, the darndest things. Yes, kids say the darndest things. So. Um, this little guy here and his tail has some metal in it so you can bend it, but you can see there's just normal discoloration. Okay. There's no rips, no tears. There's no funky smells. He's just a super cute, kitschy little moon monkey. Now his ribbon is a little wrinkled. He was stored for a really long time. I don't know if you guys would want to replace that or try to do some wrinkle release on that, but that is his original little uh, ribbon on there. So considering that he's missing one of his little pom-poms for the antenna, usually these go for, you know, 80 to a hundred dollars on other platforms since that's missing. And you might want to try to replace it or just, you know, take the one off, whatever you want to do. That's why I made sure that the price reflected any condition issues. So he does have, if I remember where it's at, it's right here on his stomach. He has his original little, uh, moon necks, tag right there. And then on the back, it says Knickerbocker. So yeah, you guys probably can't do research on these because they don't become available all that often. So, uh, but if you go on worth point, you will see what they usually sell for. And he does sort of sit on his back feet. So he would be fun in any kind of kitschy decor. It doesn't necessarily have to be anything that is space related, uh, but he's just this cute little Unique little weirdo. I just think he's really fun. The measurements on him, he's about 14 inches tall, and he's roughly about 12 inches across. So um, you can see on the face a little bit, just slight discoloration. Now, I can't say there's any staining. I think any of the darkening you see is just the darkening from years of it being stored. Um, if there's any darkening here, it could be maybe the wire inside rusted a little bit, and that's what made it a little darker there on his tail, but you can, I don't want to do it too much, but you can bend the tail uh, because there's wire in there. There's armature in there that you can do what you want with his little tail. So cute little fella. I'm not seeing any interest. That's okay. He can hang around with me a little bit longer, but he would be $30, which is a fraction of what they sell for when they're in perfect condition. And the only major issue is he is missing one of his pom poms here on the top. So We'll bring this little guy back for the recap. One of the moon necks. He is the moon monkey. And we'll turn it over to Bill. $20, Jason. And again, oh, wait. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, guys. I see you, Dusty, in at 30. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll do a countdown on him uh, if anyone is interested. Or, uh, Dusty Moose, you might want to put in a just in case to secure your bid. So let's count him down. Uh, 31 or more from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. Again, the only condition issue is he's missing a pom pom. There's no weird smells. It's just that typical, you know, discoloration. And, you know, maybe now and again, a little fiber comes off him since he's so old, but he's in really good condition. So buddy, you got a home. You're going to live with Dusty Moose. Thank you so much, Dusty. You'll enjoy him. He's coming to you. Thank you again. All right, Bill. 
Okay, we are halfway through the offer up part of our show tonight. And my next item is going to start at $20. And again, I'm doing sort of my curiosities um, sale today. I have one of these awesome, uh, and this is the second time I've had this one, uh, Walking Banks. Um, it says the remarkable bank that makes your pennies walk. And I, I did sell one of these once before, and I know that I'm not going to be able to adequately demonstrate the walking because it has to be completely on a level surface in order for it to work. But it does have the original box. The box does have some life to it. Um, it's been bent, but it's still there. But I do have to issue the same alert that I issued for the last item. Um, and I thought I'd just get these over at the same time for all of you clown lovers. Um, it is got a tin lithograph clown on the back. But the pennies walk down this little uh, down this little kind of slide. And remarkably, they always land in this slot. I've done it like a hundred times. They always land in the slot. And then there is a slot to put larger coins in. Now on a level surface, I would say it works perfectly about 80% of the time. Sometimes it gets hung up here on the top and you have to give it a little push. But once it goes through that point, it works perfectly. So I did bring a board just to see I, again, I tried this on uh, live before and it didn't work, uh, but let's just see. I think I was on that live. Oh, are you? Yeah, you got it. It's because of, I don't have it level, but it's super fun. I guarantee it. It's super fun. And um, oh, I'm just realizing now that there is there are words on the back that I can't read, um, but there's some information about it here on the back. And then there is a stopper at the bottom. You need like a coin to open it, which is ironic because ideally all your coins would be inside the bank in order to open it. Um, but it's really fun. It is uh, nine inches tall, five inches from side to side. And I'm going to go ahead and start that countdown. Just point out a little bit of wear in the tin up here, which just tells us that it's older. All right. Uh, real fun if you have kids that come come around to your house and you know they can you can give them a coin each time they come and then they can have a little collection of coins that they can buy absolutely nothing with in the stores anymore. But nonetheless, I guess this is the use for pennies today. Pennies have no other use than to entertain us with old toys. <laughs> did you know? Did you know it costs more to make a penny than it's actually worth? Yeah. 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 You're right, Brian. It's true. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I love clowns too, Tracy. I love them. So we're looking for 21 or more. 50, uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. I actually practiced today. I was trying to build a little table. That, that could sit level, but I couldn't even get the table to be level. So I just said- Valiant, valiant effort. Thank you so much, Nikki. This is coming to you. Anything but packing Tupperware. Um, my next item is gonna start at $25, Jason. Like I said, I've got a bunch of Inesco items in my sale this evening. Um, and this is the, uh, this series by Inesco is called Sweetheart of the Month. Um, this is the May figurine. If you know me, I've had uh, another series by Inesco, uh, I think a couple sales ago, I sold the March, uh, kind of, I don't know what they call those, I call them the Banner Girls. This is another series I wasn't as familiar with, but again, this is called Sweetheart of the Month. They came in a little box that looked like little theater curtains, and then they were sitting on the stage. This does not have its original box. There is some writing on the bottom, whoever owned it wrote some years or something. The marking on the bottom, those E9295, e that's a series by Inesco. It is a harder to find series. Um, it does have its Inesco sticker, but there is definitely wear to that. And then there's another sticker, which I assume is the original price tag at the bottom of that, perhaps. But I love these um, figurines. There are other series that also do the synthetic hair. I'm a sucker for the synthetic hair um, girls and angels. Um, and I wanted to bring her because obviously we're heading into May and some of you may have a friend or yourself that has a May birthday and you may not have her in your collection, which is why this is starting a little bit higher because of the rarity or harder to find nature of this particular series by Inesco. The other thing to point out is that these faces are super cute. Sometimes when you find this face, which also looks like the Napco faces, 
and an Esco on Napco. Something's got a little wild with the paint. There's no getting wild with the paint on this one. They did a really good job on that. There's a little bit of like where I think age or over time from the, I assume this was much more blue at some point, unless they did it that way. Again, I couldn't find another one of the May to compare. Um, some of the other months pop up, but not very often. So again, that's why she's 25, um, just because she doesn't come up uh, that often, at least in my research. Or um, And I didn't want to start another collection for myself because I can't be plagued by finding another UNESCO collection when I have one I'm trying to finish. Um, but looking for 25, um, again, super cute. Um, she, I don't think I gave you the height. She's three and a quarter inches tall by two and three quarters inches wide. So she's a little bit smaller. Um, but I'll put her to the side and bring her back for the recap. You can think about it until that point. Over to you, Brian. Okay, Jason, I am starting at 40. All right. And I have a Hula Doll music box. God, she's good. <laughs> God, she's um, good. She's in, she is in really good shape. Let's show off her top there. Oh, uh, I honestly do not think this was... was Played. I'm not really seeing any issues with her. Of course, there's a few wisps, wisps of hair that, you know, static cling and everything over time, but her hair is in really good shape. Um, the music box does work. I'll play it in a minute. Her skirt is, is the strands are, for the most part, are all really well attached and, and pretty flat and, and all together. They're very, very white. Um, and it doesn't, it's not going to pick it up now, but the pupils of her eyes and her lips do glow. So they are a day glow, pa day glow paint. And let me just play it. I don't know what, what um, song it is. There is no markings on the bottom. It's kind of hard to... Hopefully you can hear it as I pull that back, but she does turn. It's a slow, it's a slow turn, but I, I, I think it's that's how it turned normally. She's got her. I know they're not called pom poms, but that's what they. I'm going to call them pom poms there. And the string is still attached in one piece here. Face is painted very well, just in good shape overall. And I don't think I gave a height. She is 15 inches tall, so she's a good size. The arms can bend. I have not touched them. This is how they were when I got them, but you could reposition them if you want to. She's, she's tall and in charge. She is right she's amazing. to dance. You know, every time I find these, speaking of when John was showing his May girl, their hair is always so frayed out and the yeah. hair on this one. I mean, there's, there's a few little strands as you could probably see in the light, but for the most part, her hair is really, it's really good shape. Obviously wasn't cut. Nobody played around with that. Man, for if you guys have like a Hawaii room or heading into summer, if you guys do a little luau, she would be the perfect centerpiece for your decor. She's fun and a tiki bar. Oh my god! I don't think. Well, if you have if you have guests over, just put her under some sort of glass box or something because <laughs> you want to make sure she's still there at the end of the evening. Yeah. Agreed. So good. Doesn't How tall, Ryan? Uh, 15, 15 inches tall. God, she's good. And she has that pose doll kind of face too yeah, on her, which definitely. is really good. She's amazing. On the, taller, on the taller side, if you ask me, for, for some of these. Agreed. Just a little bit shorter sometimes. But we can keep things moving along and she will be back. All right, we'll just wait a moment for the lag and see if anybody's interested in her. Thank you so much, Karen G, for being our official mod and bid ender. Kim, thank you so much for being our backup mod. Again, guys, if you are not subscribed to the fellas here on the channel, please do so. We put all the links to their Instagram and their YouTubes in the description here. And if you're watching this on the replay, please give all of us a follow. Every little bit helps grow our small business. So, um, $65. And that is uh, a, a fair start price for a very, very unique light that I'm going to take my time to show you guys. This is a hobbyist UFO light. Okay. It's in very, very good condition. It sits on its base. As you can see, these were very popular in the late 1970s. They were, uh, I did a little bit of research. The research tells me that they were uh, produced a lot at the hobbyists during the Star Wars era, which was the late 19. 70s 
And these are sort of difficult to find. Sometimes when it comes to the hobbyist lights, uh, we were, I was talking a little earlier to Brian, like the Valentine's Day ones aren't as, uh, they're not as easily found. This one is not as easily found either. So uh, there's no damage to it. I am going to sit it down. The base does separate from the top. And I wanted to show you real quickly what the top looks like. And I'm only holding it. It does sit on there um, really good by itself. The only, the only thing I can tell you guys, thank you for the bids. Wings is in at 65. Karen's in at 68. It does not have one of those little toggle switches. So it's either turned on or you have to unplug it. So it has all the different little uh, pegs that we use in the ceramic Christmas trees. All these round pieces, they're marbles. So they actually glued marbles into them. So the top is one of the harder to find pegs that you would use uh, for uh, earlier ceramic Christmas tree. That is actually, a all these are affixed to it. So they're all glued in there. And then they put those little gem or those little um, rocks in there, those pebbles to fill all those little holes. And then all these little pegs are the little tiny ones that we use on ceramic Christmas trees. So the under part here, those are all purple. Then there's two white marbles that I guess indicate like the search lights like we've all seen. And then on the inside, they put a little bit of tape underneath some of it. So what I did was to make sure that the bulb didn't heat up too much, I went out and got you an LED bulb. So you're going to have a brand new LED bulb in there, which I put them in my ceramic trees because they can be brighter and they can light it up better. So you also needed a squattier bulb to go in there. You needed an appliance bulb. So this will give you years of use on this. And you can see how they have it wired in. This is your base. So it's sort of on a moon. There's the underneath part, and you can see when it was created May of 1979 by a fella with the initials or a woman by the initials of J.E.P. So now some of the ones I found right there where you see that little smear mark, they actually had like a little R2-D2 that I guess you could have painted and added it. So Karen, I see it at 75, Wings is in at 80. We had this little weird little goober, so we're going to add him. So he's going to come with it. Now, I don't know his real era, so he... he is he good, Brian? Is he I, a little? I think he's 50s, if you ask me. Okay. Now, larger ones of that same style. Gotcha. So Tina had this sitting around him with her jewelry stuff. He has a little wheel that goes between his legs, so I will add that. But he sits right there. So once you get this sat the way you want it, you just pop him on. And I thought he was the right scale to kind of be your little, you know, spaceman. So he's going to come along with it. And if you want to glue him to the base there, you can. So he just kind of fits right there in that smear mark there on the bottom. So when the piece is assembled, it measures about 10 inches tall. So it measures about 10 inches tall by about nine inches wide. So again, this is a hobbyist piece, but this mold isn't a mold that comes around that often. So here you can see from the top, multiple different colors. I think this is really fun. One other caveat, when it comes to shipping, this one will be shipped by itself. I don't want to ship it with anything else because, you know, I, I don't want it to get damaged. So um, this is the first one I ever saw. So I think it's really, really neat. So let me show you the cord. This is the plug that you're dealing with, but the plug doesn't have one of those little toggle switches. Like I said, it's either on or off. So let me sit it back on. We'll plug it in. We are in at 80. Thank you so much. We're looking for 81 or more. And we're going to do a countdown just in case for active bidders. I think this is really fun. So uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end again. Those are all marbles in there that are glued in there. All sorts of different pegs. And this is one of a kind because each one's a little bit different because they were all, you know, made by they were all made by a different person. So thank you all for the bids. There's the bid. Oh my God. Uh Karen had a just in case of 180, but Wings had a just in case of 450. So Wings. Uh, for, for 181, congratulations. It's, it's coming to you. Thank you guys so much for the bids. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. I don't know what to say. Thank you. All right. Well, then. Wings clearly knows about that. She knows who the, the mold maker was. Okay. 
Great yeah. Plains molds. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, we're going to go way back. We're going to dial it way, way back, everyone. <laughs> I have a planter. It's going to start at $20 if anyone's interested. It is one of our favorite companies. Not my favorite company, but it is a Rubens planter. I love it. But this one is super cool. It is a really fun Ferris wheel. Uh, and in addition to being a planter, it's also a music box, a working music box that is in time still and has an on off switch. It's super, super cool. So as you can see, the music box is screwed in right here up at the top. Um, yeah, imagine that I have a planter and this actually was used for plants at one point. I spent quite a bit of time cleaning it out. Uh, I got most of it out, but it is super cute. Uh, it's got like three sets of stuff going on here. There's a little boy and a little girl riding the Ferris wheel and they're riding with their besties, Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy. And there is a little elephant and a little lamb riding up at the top. Super, super cute uh, planter. And it's a good size, as you can see. Eight inches tall, six inches across. And as I said, a working music box. A working music box. <laughs> This is so good. And it plays that good night song. What's it called? Rockabye oh, Baby. Oh, yeah, oh, the good night song. <laughs> yeah, it's in great condition. No chips, no cracks, no hairlines, minimal crazing. Uh, it's got all this fun candy on the back, impressed into the back. Just a nice little music box. And I, I, I don't know if many of you saw my, um, my sort of clown inspired carnival inspired instagram post a couple months ago but many of the things i'm bringing tonight were in that sort of display uh and this was one of them super cool so i see we have a bid so i'm going to start a countdown thank you trina so we're looking for 21 or more if anyone else is interested i'm going to start that countdown oh and i just want to point out you can see it the only paint loss is a bit of cold paint on the raggedy's heads their raggedy hair has a little raggedy paint which i think is appropriate so 21 or more, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Man, if you guys did like a summer display, you know, like down the shore, this would look good too. Yeah, I was going to put it in my 4th of July display, but it, that shelf is not as big as the other holidays. <laughs> Thank you, Trina. It is coming to you. I appreciate it. I have a $42 start, Jason. I have the uh, clear glass moon and stars uh, lidded pedestal candy dish. Um, it is, it measures eight inches tall by four and a half. Uh, the opening is four and a half. Opening is four and a half. And the ba base of this is three and a quarter. Let's see if I can get that lid back on there. Um, just a gorgeous piece. I did not have a space theme, but this would be great if you have space themes. Um, obviously, the moon and stars is popular. The clear glass doesn't come around as often. There are some condition issues to note on the lid itself. First of all, this was used, so the points are a little rough. I don't really see any, like... I mean, there's a, this is probably the, you're not going to be able to see that, but this is probably the worst one. It's probably the most rough. I wouldn't say any of them are really chipped. It's just that, you know, putting it in and taking it off, putting it in and taking it off over time has led to those to be a little rough. The one thing I should note is that there's some schmutz here and then it kind of goes up to there. And I tried to get it off a couple of ways. I was unsuccessful. Um, I don't really know what it is. Um, I thought it was just a sticker residue or something, but I tried scrubbing, tried a different couple of items, and I did not get that off. So be forewarned about that if you're interested in this. But when the lid is on, you really don't notice any of that at all. Um, also, these are great. I have this display with one of the color changing tea lights in this. It really casts a nice glow and color. Um, if you use in a room that's a little bit darker than, than or dark most times of the day, or in the end of the evening for sure. It's a great way to use this if you don't want to use it um, for its intended purpose, but honestly, use it however you want. If you just want to use the bottom, these are great too for, I always say with glass pieces, I like using them for uh, house plants. I like putting the pot the pot inside these, having the, the plants come out of them. It's a great way to display your glass if you just don't, don't, want, don't want to do a full kind of glass display. And again, the 
clear glass is great any time of year, but particularly in the winter months, it's, it's a really nice thing to bring out um, with all of your reds and greens. But a $42 start, again, this is a taller one. This is the eight inch high version. Um, there's the version without the pedestal that sits lower, obviously, because it doesn't have that little knobby part at the bottom. Um, but this is the taller by Ellie Smith. And John, uh, surprisingly, the clear pieces by Ellie Smith are sort of difficult to find. They didn't seem to make a ton of them. And if you're trying to complete like a rainbow of them or you're trying to maybe get something to add to your display, the clear pieces by Ellie Smith just are not out there. It, LG Wright made a lot more, but the later uh, Ellie Smith, you just can't find a lot of the uh, clear pieces. Yeah, and that's why I thank you for saying that because that's why I brought this to the sale because I want to bring some things you don't see as often um, and things that I'm ready to, I've had my time and enjoyment with them. And this is a piece that I was ready to part with because I know that this is a little harder to find. I know we say that often, you hear us say that, but when we do say it, we do mean it. We're not yes. just saying that. Um, again, the, the clear glass also seems to be having a moment. So those two reasons why I want to bring this to the sale. But I don't see an interest on this, but I will uh, bring it back. Uh, for the recap, and I'm going to turn it over to you, Brian. Okay, starting bid of $12 for choice. And I have these West German postcards that were made by Kruger. Wait, and Brian, we, yep, we got a bid. Oh, and sorry. Brian's bidding, and Brian loves Brian. his moon and star. So, Brian, I see you at 42 looking for 43 or more. Remember, just in case is in effect for active bidders. Once I start that countdown, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. So we're looking for 43 or more. The bid end from Karen Gillette. Thank you so much, Karen, for being our bid ender this evening. We appreciate the help. It always surprises me, the two hard colors, milk glass and clear for Ellie Smith. Oh, milk And I'm not ready to part with my milk glass just yet. No. Uh, there's a bid end from uh, Karen. Thank you so much, Brian. This company for 42. Now over to you, Brian. All righty. Uh, so again, start a starting bid of $12 for choice. And I have four West German postcards made by Kruger. Each, each features an animal holding flowers, and they have the winking lenticular eyes on them. So you to choose from the elephant here. We have a cat. We have, I think this is a squirrel yes, with, the, with a friendly little grasshopper down there. Hopefully the, the eyes moving is coming through. This one doesn't seem like it's coming through as much. And then lastly, the choice of a tiger receiving a little flower from this mouse here. These are so kitschy. These are <laughs> they're so very good. kitschy. The, I, I should have stated they're all unused. Um, the, the cat one has a little bit more wear for some reason here by the eyes. All of them, like the eyes are pressed, pressed in just a little bit through the back because it is a 3D thing and probably how maybe they were stored or whatever, or just the how they were attached to the postcard. It does kind of, you know, come through on the other side. But, you know, originally people would have used these anyway, so that wouldn't have mattered. Uh, it would have been in the writing space. Uh, I don't think I said it, but they are 5.75 inches tall. This is the elephant. It's got a little bit of uh, stuff on the back there, but just very kitschy, great, um, oh great God. graphics. If these are your kind of thing, if you like these animals, I love lenticular things. So mm -hmm. that's why I picked these up. Um, but as often happens, we can't keep everything that we get, or we sometimes we hold on to it and then we decide to, to pass it on to somebody else. So that's why I'm bringing them here tonight. And the eyes on yours are very vibrant because a lot of times that lenticular can kind of get wonky yeah, after this, years. This one in particular, it's, I, I could see it as I'm even trying to do it. Just, this one isn't working as well as the other three, but it, it does work. But it's it's just sometimes they like you can kind of see that the double image almost on that eye a little bit more. That does happen sometimes, but the other the other three seem to be working better. She's she's got a good wink there. It's so fun. So we're looking for 13 or more. If these are your kind of style and interest, it is for choice. So let's go ahead. We'll get the countdown started. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, 
2, and 1. So we're looking for 13 for the bid end. You cannot, and I say this often with this kitschy stuff, you cannot be having a bad day if you have a face like that to look at. Like That's that's the Kruger name there and then West German there. And so there's the bid end. So it looked like bug. Uh, let me know if you're interested in elephant, tiger, squirrel, or cat. Oh or all of them, if you want all of them. Oh my God, those are so cool. Look at the pants on Mr. Elephant there. I know, right? I'll, I'll ship them in these plastic as well. Gosh, these are fun. And he's a trunk up, so that means he's good luck. That's true. Thank you for pointing that out. Oh my God, that kitty cat. She's, she's the only one that doesn't have a little friend on her drawing. I'm not sure why, but squirrel? Oh, okay. it's a squirrel. Because she ate the little mouse. <laughs> ah, could be. <laughs> oh, Bill, such tragedy to the stories. Such tragedy. All right, $20. And I've had a couple pieces of these abstract uh, oil on canvas. And I, this, I have this and one more. But I thought... Uh, this kind of looked like solar flares. I don't know. It kind of had a space kind of theme to it. I just kind of think it fit uh, tonight's decor. And it's very mid-century. It's very abstract. Again, I don't know much about this artist, but it's his name is Ingelberg C. Green. And this is dated now. I can't confirm because anybody could date it and put it on the back. But when I bought the collection, they were all dated. And this one says between 1963 and 1965. Okay. So, but I think it definitely has those kind of feels. You can see when I get up close here, it is textured. So that it is a textured paint. Let me see if we can show you from the side. So if you're looking for a really bright abstract piece to go into your mid-century decor, I think this would definitely fit the bill. So again, don't be too concerned about shipping. I know how to ship these so that they are affordable. It is matted in a wooden frame and the wooden frame has a gold sort of tone to it, which I think plays off the, the color uh, very beautifully. Some of the colors in there are the different burnts, you know, like colors of the yellows, the oranges, there is some white there, some cream. And of course, you know, there is some red mixed in with all that. So the size of this is 15 inches by nine, wait, did I do that right? Yeah, 15 by 19. It measures 15 by 19. Now, usually when you get a piece of art, the way it's hung is the way it's supposed to. So it's supposed to go like this. But honestly, I think you could display it any way you want to. So on your gallery wall, if you wanted to display it this way, you could. You know, you could display it any way that you kind of see whatever kind of design you want. So kind of like this if you guys have, like I said, a mid-century decor um, if you guys collect maybe um, some amberina, pieces of glass, if you guys um, put that in front of this, I just think it's going to look really, really neat. So, again, it is artist painted. It is one of a kind. It, the no signature here on the outside that I can find, but I have been selling some of these uh, throughout the past couple months, and it was a collection that I had bought. And it's this fella, and it's it's a German name, Ingelberg C. Uh, Green. I could not find him. But everyone that's purchased one has seemed to enjoy it, and it fits in their decor. So it could fit in a modern decor. It would look good if you guys are into brass. And like I said, if you're into glass, anything mid-century. I do. I believe these are great colors, and they can pull out all different things. Like, like I said, if you have amberina glass, look how good that looks together. I think that pairs really nicely together. And it's a great summer uh, piece of artwork, too. I don't know if you folks sometimes... Uh, we've changed out our artwork for the seasons. I think this would be a good one for summer and maybe even fall with those kind of colors. So, um, again, it is professionally framed. So you can see that the paper on the back is attached. If you wanted me to, I could probably take it out of the frame and ship it out of the frame. It is on canvas. And, again, it does measure 15 by 19. So it is going to take, you know, some dedication for where you're going to want to put it because it is a larger picture. So, um, but this is one of my last ones and I wanted to offer it because the other ones did so well on a live. Uh, but again, I do realize that the size of it may turn some folks off, but just that abstract mid-century kind of look, like I said, I was going for I Dream of Genie kind of space things. I don't know. I was seeing kind of solar flares maybe coming off. I know there's some darker colors in there. I'm not seeing any interest. That's okay. Something like this. 
you might have to think about, and we will bring it back during the recap, and let's get it moving and get Bill over here. All right, sir. $20 for choice, Jason. And I'll, I'll be honest, I've never seen these before. So when I picked them up, I was super excited. Don't know if anyone will be interested, but I have these super cute. There are two to choose from. Um, little circus animals or animals with, these are actual rubber faces. They're like little squeak heads on top of these satin ornaments that uh, are pink and red, mounted on a gold base, Japan stamp on the bottom, little pom-poms, a little stain right there, little pom-poms for uh, paws. And the lion's got a little hat with some sequins on the top or some painted sequins on the top in super, super good condition, a really nice collar. Uh, the lion is 5.5 inches tall. I just had never seen these before and I wish that I had found them before I did my circus display. So I think this is super cool. Um, so I have a little lion friend and then at one inch taller, I also have this little elephant friend who is balancing another satin ball on the upright trunk. And they cleaned up really nicely. They were pretty dirty when I got them. The only condition issue on either of them that you should know about is it looks like at one point, you can see that ring on the elephant's head. It looks like the elephant would have had a little hat, probably similar to what the lion has. Um, but someone could craft one or someone, you know, I, I didn't notice it initially. So it's not like initially noticeable until you really see it. But super, super cute. Um, this is the size difference when you look at them together. I don't know if others were made in this series. Again, they are stamped Japan on the bottom, but I think they're adorable. I was really happy to find them and try to find a home for them in one of the kitschy collections. So I'm gonna start a countdown. If anyone else is interested, uh, we're looking for 21 or more. 15, uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. And Kim, that is exactly what I thought when I found these because I have I have a bin of pixie heads and I was like, why don't I just pop them on these little these little ornaments? That is so cool. So I think I may try that. Courtney, you did not need um, your just in case. You have first choice. At, you have only choice at 20. Let me know if you wanted the lion or the elephant. Thank you so much. Puppet heads too. I have I have, a, I have some, you know, the vinyl puppets when the, when yep. the when yep. they rip off. Thank um, you, Courtney. Choice, for starting, choice starting at 16, Jason. Mm -hmm. um, I have two wall pockets in this round. Um, your first choice is this butterfly. Um, it is four and a quarter inches high by four and a quarter inches wide by one and three quarters inches deep. Um, it was used. You can see a little bit of residue on the inside of this wall pocket. I don't know if the wire is original to it, but it does. It is sturdy. So if you want to use it as is, you're more than welcome to. There is crazing on this one on the on the butterfly wall pocket. No marking. I don't know who made it. Um, it's this uh, kind of mauve color on the edges and then that bright kind of more kind of turquoise slash greens, kind of seafoam green on the interior and then the brown at the very center. So that's your first choice. Again, these are both wall pockets. First choice is the butterfly. And your second choice, it's not a UFO, but it is a hobbyist piece, this ceramic uh, mushroom pitcher. I don't have the uh, maker on this one, uh, either the person who made it or the mold maker, and neither of those appears on this. Um, it's this great splatterware or splatter design, which I, I'm, I'm such a fan of the splatter. Um, design on these old hobbyist pieces. Um, you'll, you may have seen this mold before. People painted the mushrooms different colors, but I like that this person's like, I like the splatter too. I'm just gonna do this all over it. So it's got the yellow and the kind of the reddish oranges. There's a big dot of the orange right on the edge of that uh, lip there to the picture. This measures four and a half inches high by four and a half inches wide by one and a half inches deep. So it's a little bit um, less deep than the Butterfly wall pocket. Deborah, I seen it at 16, looking for 17 or more. No issues to note on this um, at all. I don't see any. I don't see any chips cracker crazy. Uh, no, I don't even know if this was used for its intended purpose. It was probably given as a sweet gift to someone, and then they just hung it on their wall. Um, so again, the butterfly wall pocket or the mushroom pitcher wall pocket, looking for 17 or more. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. 9, 8, 
seven six five four three two one bid end so we're looking for 17 or more the bid end from karen gillette i feel like it would be an interesting personality test to see who, who painted like real versus did the splatter painting the mushroom gets a little interesting if you've seen some of those out in the wild thanks so much karen for the bid end deborah let me know if you wanted the butterfly or the mushroom picture i can just watch the comments and deal with it there over to you brian okay my starting bid jason is uh 36. all right and i have a pair of long neck pig oh salt and pepper shakers oh god these are fantastic <laughs> I do want to note they do have crazing in them. And let me get as close as I can to she definitely has more crazing uh, in the head and the face than the male does. But other than the crazing, they have no chips, cracks or breaks. They do have Japan stickers and cork on the bottom. So she there it's kind of coming through now. You can kind of see it better. She definitely has noticeable crazing. Uh, uh, through her neck into her face. Uh, let me show him. He has less less crazing, but you can still kind of see some there. Oh my God, what kind of hat is he wearing? Is he wearing like a? I, to me, I think graduation, but it's not a graduation. It's it's like a. I, I'm not even sure. It's like a beret with like a tassel exactly, on. Exactly. Yeah. My God, with his scarf and his jacket and his chubby belly, yes. like you know, mind. and so many of the tall boys are they're just straight, like uh -huh. because there's this one has curve to it. I really like yeah. it. Yeah, I do too. And you don't see, I have not seen a set of pig long boys in all the years. Yes, Patty, I think it is. I think it is a fez. I think that's what it is. One of those, oh, like, yeah, makes sense. Yep, yeah. yep. Now this is, Shriner. that is the paint that's not that's not like dirt or anything like that that is how they were painted yeah. i could not find the maker of these in my research um i was a, a, unable to identify them um i i would bet it's either tilso or wales that would be my guess yeah with the painting you're right yeah i'm with you bill yeah because they tried to mimic Napco because Napco was making a lot of these long boys back in the day. And then the way these are painted, yeah, Bill, you're probably 100% correct. You can still see some of the crazing here. Again, that is how, how they were painted. That's the style of them on the on the, on the, the pause. Apron. Look at her blue <laughs> apron. I um, mean, honest to Pete. And her bandana. I mean, they, they even gave her a slight like, female anatomy there. She's got little tatas going yeah, on she there. <laughs> she is so happy. Bill's yeah, Bill's got to leave. Close her eyes. <laughs> oh my God, these are so good. <laughs> they're up. They're definitely up your alley, Jason. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yep, they are. But they're so good. Yep, Chrissy's in at thirty six. Thirty six. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead. We'll get the countdown started because we still have a few rounds to get to. God, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So we're looking for 37 or the bid end. You can, that, the, you can see the crazing. On the Deanna, 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 you have to put a bid in first. Yes, Deanna, you need to put in a bid. Uh, you can't just put in a just in case. And there's the bid end. So um, these are coming to you for 36. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, guys, again, just a refresher. If you guys are new to the just in case, please remember you have to have been an active bidder. So you have to at least place one bid. And then that gives you the ability to exercise the just in case. So um, $15 is my next item. And I got to tell you, I couldn't find this anywhere because. This is advertising ephemera um, from the 1930s. It's new old stock now. Somebody did have it vacuum sealed. No worries, Deanna. It's all right. Um, uh, this Somebody had this vacuum sealed. So I do believe this is a original tissue box unopened from the 1930s. Look at that great font on there. So you have Roxy tissues and, of course, the stars played on my whole kind of space theme. Look at the way they spelt this. So it is an aid to my lady's beauty 
And it, of course, it is Roxy Tissues. And it's reading true to color. Here is, if you guys can see, I'm going to tilt it so you can see. Here's the opening. It's never been opened. Uh, $15. This is going to be great. You can actually put it in your bathroom. You can put it in with your um, maybe your makeup displays. I feel like there's a little separation here in the box. Okay. So I feel like underneath the cellophane, there is some separation. But again, I believe that this is an original unused with 500 facial tissues box from the 1930s. So have any of you guys, or especially John, I guess I should say, have you ever seen one of these before? You're kind of the master of advertising. No. No, I don't even. I do not know that brand. I've never heard of the brand. I think this would look great. This would look great though with your jadeite, and definitely for Christmas because of the colors yes. and the stars for sure. Agreed. And I was thinking this would be a great riser for your moon or your spaceman. You know, you could put the bottles because it is a nice sturdy box. You could sit them on top. But everything that John just said, this is just one of those pieces that you can't really figure out a price for it because there are many of these around. You know, like. Folks I know, especially one of my dealers at the store, he always collected vintage toilet paper and vintage like tissue boxes and things like that. So there are folks out there that do collect these kind of things. And I have to tell you, that font is what sold me. The colors on it, it's like that mint jadeite green with the black on it. And again, it, there's the top. So there is a perforation hole right here. You're just not seeing it. There you go. Now it's coming through. So you guys can see. So there's no barcode on it due to the font. I do believe that this is not some like reproduction 30s that they did in the 50s. I believe this is a true tissue box from the 1930s with that deco kind of design. So the measurements on it is, is it's 10 inches long. It's about five inches wide. And then when it sits on the side, it's about four and a half inches. So, and again, you get all different kind of uh, opportunities of advertising because it's on all the sides except for the bottom. So if you guys have like a vintage bathroom, seeing that this is vacuum sealed with the cellophane on it, you could, you know, put this in there, put it on the back of the toilet. Like it's a mock, you know, box of um, tissues. I know folks will get the multicolored, you know, the different colored toilet paper. And that's like, you know, don't use, it's just there for decor. So um, but again, you can't get much more unique when it comes to these stars. And trust me, I won't be sad if this sells. I've kind of become attached to this because this is really something that's different, especially with the advertising. So it is Roxy. I mean, if you guys have like, um, if you guys do, if you collect makeup, if you kind of maybe collect the lingerie, if you have one of those little changing areas or like a spare bedroom that you kind of do up and use it as your dressing room, this would look great as a riser and decor in there. So one more time, it is Roxy Tissue. And then I love the fact that they say it's an aid to my lady's beauty. You just can't get much more deco than that. But there's no interest. That's okay. This may or may not come back during the recap because I think I just fell in love with it even more. But it'll come back for the recap. So all right. So if it's an aid to my lady's beauty, does that mean none of us can use it? No, I and think we so can use it. When I went to that home. Shame on the person that opens it, though, because that's been, I think William's in at 15. So, okay, William's in at 15. Shame on the person. My question is, if anybody opens it, what color are the tissues? Are the tissues going to just be white or the tissues going to maybe be maybe? They were never white. You don't, th well, do they you think they were they're always like some color? You really think that the, uh, I want to hope that the color on the inside is that seafoam green. That's what I'm hoping for. But uh, William is in at 15, so let's go ahead and do a countdown. I got to tell you, it's going to be doggone near one of a kind. So uh, 16 or more, let's count it down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one, bid end. Susan, I don't know that they're going to be moldy, but I'm definitely with, uh, with with Chrissy. I'm hoping that they're like a mint or seafoam green. But um, feels I got to tell early. you. It feels too early. But did they color them that, then? I don't know. See, that I, would be a I, I think white was harder to achieve actually back then, which is why I think they used the dyes. Okay. All that, right. that, well, actually, that was the case in the food industry, so I don't know if it's the same. Right. 
Re but anyway. research project for somebody, research project. Someone, William, will know, someone will know the answer in the next two minutes. William, if you open it, let me know what color they are. I'm dying to know. All right, Bill. So we have two more rounds before the recap, everyone. Uh, it's a hefty recap. And then we have our two quick claim rounds. So we're going to try to move this along quickly so we can get to it. Um, up next, I have a $10 item. Um, it is this gorgeous wooden brown box. Um, as you can see, it's brown. It has this great white top on it with a red squiggle line. I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. It, it was made in Japan. It's marked Japan on the bottom. Uh, it's just a fantastic, fantastic little box. Um, it has a hole in the top too. Uh, and on the front is this really fun little soldier guy. Gotta be something he's, he's I know. not showing. It's this fun little soldier guy who actually has a spring head. So there's a little window behind him. He kind of reminds me of one of those British, um, what are they called? The guards? No, the guards outside. Oh, the yes. Um, Nottingham Palace, whatever they are. But anyway, he's a little soldier with a nodding head. And he is, I still have the original box that he came with. Um, it is a soldier pencil well with a uh, hand decorated pencil. So you can see at one time it would have had a green, a pink and a blue pencil with little soldier heads, beef eaters. Yes. Or yes. yes. That's what they are. So yeah, at one time there would have been three little, um, three little pencils. And actually this is the time. Uh, Cause I say I have them. <laughs> what cute are they? I love them. Uh, oh they've, they've actually never even been sharpened. Um, they're in their original box in their original state of being. They are uh, actual sized pencils. They're not minis, they're a good size. And the entire box with what's in it is eight inches tall. Super, super cool. I love these pencils. The pencils are actually marked Japan as well. Uh, yes. I you were setting this up. I'm not lying. It's marked Japan. I started to doubt myself. Um, but I think, they're, I think it's just a really fun little uh, a fun little thing to add to your collection, to add to your office, to give as a gift. Um, I love that this little bobblehead is here and it's in really great condition. I don't have any condition issues to note, save the fact that one of the pencils has a little manufacturing dent in it. And I know that it's a dent because the paint pooled down into that little dent, but that's the only issue with this set. Super, super fun. And the box is in pretty good condition. There's a little bit of wear at the top, but other than that, it's in really good condition. So it's a display piece on its own. Amy, so, he bought this when he distracted us shopping together last week. <laughs> oh, no, I've had this for quite some time. Gotcha. I, I couldn't decide if this was going into the 4th of July display. Um, gotcha. So, yeah, some of the things today are from the what I thought would go into the display. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start a countdown. Thank you for your interest. Uh, right now we're looking for 17 or more. 20. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. This is this fun? This is good. But I don't know why no one wanted the brown box. I thought I was doing a good job selling the brown box as is. Like, there's got to be something more. There's got to be. Thank you for the bid and Karen. Uh, Jason, you tell me what order you're seeing it come in. Jamie for 20. Addy is after the bid end. Okay. Um, congratulations, Jamie. Thank you both for your bids. All right. Let's get John over here. I have my last choice round for the evening, Jason. Um, these are going to start at $22 for choice. Um, again, I wanted to bring things you don't see as often. These are Joseph's originals, but they are the 1963 birthday doll series. I have the April and the May. The April has one condition issue. As you might guess, if you see that bow on the back, what happens to the bow girl figurines? The bows often get cracked. So there is a repair to the bow on the back. But because it's on the back, you don't really notice it from the front. It has its original Joseph's original sticker, has some wear, has its original uh, April sticker that also has a little bit of wear. Other than those issues, she's in great condition. I love this series. I Again, you don't find them as often as the other calendar series that Joseph did. Um, these are a little bit bigger than those. Um, these are three and three quarters inches high by three and a, three and a quarter inches wide. So that's your first choice. The April Josephs, again, these are the 1963 birthday doll series. She has a little, it looks like a little hat box or cake box she's holding. 
Um, then I have the one for May. She's got a little bouquet of flowers, got this great kind of raised um, detail on her pink dress. She also has her Joseph's original sticker somewhere to that. And then the May sticker, which also has somewhere um, just a little bit of discoloration on the bottoms of these, no other markings or anything like that. So that's good to know. So again, $22 choice for either the May or the April birthday doll series from Joseph's. And again, the April one has that bow repair on the back that someone had unfortunately had a mishap somewhere along her lifespan, but is still here today to tell the story. And we like to know that. So $22 choice on either of these. Um, the May one, I didn't give you measurements. That's a little bit higher. That's four and a half inches high, a little bit wider, three and a half inches wide. So a little bit taller and wider than the April one. I don't see any interest on these. I'll put them to the side and bring it back for the recap. Over to you, Brian. Okay. Uh, starting bid of 15. All and right. it's for choice, but it's, it's essentially the same thing. I have two trinket trays with, featuring a rhinestone snail, and they're made by Limoges. Uh, both both same thing, uh, gold gold trim around it. They are 7.75 inches wide, and the metal and plastic snail has fake rhinestones all around the shells. It is marked on the back here. Uh, I apologize. I just noticed that. I could probably get that off with a magic eraser where it rests on the table. So just looking for $15 on these catch-all trays here. And they're both, they're really both the same. They both feature the snail and have the rhinestones. No, as I didn't say, no rhinestones missing on any of these. Uh, the underside is the same. This one does have uh, the act, a different, the, the full on sticker, I should say, there, as opposed to this one that does not have that. Uh, otherwise, they're, they're pretty much the same thing. And so just the, uh, Fun little trinket dish, if great for putting um, uh, succulents on there and tiny pots. You could do it along with the with the snail for like an outdoor theme. Don't you think maybe these were escargot plates? It could be. Oh, that's very possible. Yeah. Have either of you guys ever had escargot? I have, I have not actually. No, no. Bill. No. no. <laughs> Uh, All right, Jason. You know what I eat? I eat potato. I, well, I know, I know, I know, I know. Pat, Patty, I see you at fifteen. Thank you. That makes a lot more sense than someone owning two of these exact same, <laughs> same trinket like jewelry trays. I, but that did not even cross my mind whatsoever. <laughs> they could be fancy, yeah, yeah. That's just my fingerprint from holding it right now. Sorry, Patty. That that will come off. Um, so we'll go ahead, since we got a bid, we'll start a countdown. I, I really didn't even think of that. It just did not cross my mind. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Uh, so we're looking for 16 or the bid end. Patty Rose, you can obviously choose from one or both. Uh, depending on how many you would like. Patty says they're good with garlic and butter. They're heavenly. Oh, oh, they probably are. And there's the bid end. So, Patty, I'll watch the comments if you want. Just let me know if you want one or both. And uh, I will send watch you both. All Let's right. Take them both, Brian. Good enough. Thanks, Patty. All right. And guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Remember, if you guys are new buyers to any of us here on the screen, because some of us do sell over on Instagram, our emails are right below right now. Everyone's email is there. I'm actually going to make us all big. Please make sure you email all of us all the information. We need your name. We need your screen name. If it's different from your real name, we need your full address. And we're going to need an email so we can get that PayPal invoice to you guys. Okay. So remember, um, Make sure you get us all your info if you're a new buyer to us. And all that information is down in the description. And it also it is also pinned at the top of the chat. So $12 choice. And I have choice on Fenton horn vases. Okay. These are the tiny ones. There's one little condition issue on this. I don't know if it was in the manufacturing or if it's a little chip. I want to find it. I kind of brought these because... I thought this would be your moonstone, although this is the opalescent hobnail. There's a little tiny rough spot right here, but it's right where the ruffle meets. 
So I'm not sure if it's a chip or if in the manufacturing, it kind of gave itself a little bubble or a fracture, but it does kind of catch your nail when you rub on it. So uh, just please note that. So these are both older Fenton. They are not signed. They are the smaller horn vases. So this is your opalescent one, kind of look like Moonstone to me. Uh, measures about four inches tall by three and a half inches wide. So these are fun to kind of, you know, put if you only have a small area, you can do a little rainbow of these. This would look great in your 4th of July display. Um, it kind of looks like fireworks right there. But again, this is your opalescent hobnail version. Uh, but it is Fenton. And the other one here, I have the Amberina one, which this one I kind of thought was like a solar flare. And yes, there is cadmium in this one. It will fluoresce down here a lot at the very bottom. And that's about where it's concentrated. It's concentrated from about here down to the bottom. So uh, just $12 if anybody's interested. These do range in price. Sometimes they go well above that. Sometimes they're right around the $12 mark. So Again, these are the smaller ones. This one is the Amberina. It measures about four inches tall. Really cute little vase. Great, great to put in with your summer display. Um, and it's about three and a half inches across. So there's no haziness to it. There's no issues. These were both produced pre-1971 because there is no Fenton stamp. So again, no real damage. Thank you, Tina. I see you in at 12. The only thing with this small one, and I've had it happen sometimes when they crimp these very tight, sometimes it gets a little stress fracture, but I can't seem to see, I can see just a faint little line going down right in here, but I'm being very nitpicky so you guys know what you're buying. So um, I don't know if maybe that was in the manufacturing or the stress and it could be a little tiny flea bite right here. But honestly, you got to look really hard. There you go. To just kind of see the little dimple in it. But it still displays beautifully. So $12 on choice. Let's go ahead and do a countdown. You can take whichever one you want. This one will call white. This one will call red. So uh, 12 or more just in case for active bidders. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. You find yourself a blue one. You got your 4th of July display already right there, ready to go. So uh, you got your red, white, and blue. So if you get a blue one. So there's the bid end. Thank you so much, Karen G. Kim, thank you so much for being our backup mod and bid ender. So Tina, I'll watch the comments. Let me know if you want the white one. Or we'll call this one red, white or red, whichever one. If she wants them both, they'll both be hers. If she, okay, they're both yours, Tina. Thank you so much. All right, Bill. Okay, this is the last round before our recap, before our quick claims. I'm going to start this at $10 if anyone's interested. I have another book, interestingly enough, also by Merrill Publishing. And this was published a year later than the one that I showed earlier. This is a 1939 mother goose linen like book every page is a different nursery rhyme and the major condition issue is that you see a little missing corner there um and you see sort of some of the normal discoloration uh these these staples do have quite a bit of patina on them and when you look up in the middle of the of the book you see that it, they have discolored the paper on these nursery rhymes a little bit but these graphics are amazing and there, I don't even know, there are probably 20, 20 different nursery rhymes in here. Uh, no writing in it, uh, no bending in it, uh, just in really good condition. No smell, uh, just really fun, good graphics. The front cover and the back cover have the same graphics on it, but all the classic fairy tales that if you don't, if you have if you have grandkids or nieces or nephews and they haven't been introduced to them yet, this is a nice little short introduction because they're usually like four or five sentences long. They're not the full, the full fairy tale. Really, really fun. These graphics are so bright too and vibrant. I mean, again, for as old as Merrill, I don't think Merrill Publishing gets the its due diligence or the due uh, what's whatever the word is, um, we, we really need to appreciate it more because their books stand the test of time. They really do. So, so fun. Uh, we're gonna do the recap in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna put this aside so the other guys can go. So think about it and it will be back in a few minutes. 
Jason, uh, starting at eighteen dollars, I have um, these Holt Howard. Um, I'm calling them "Man with Tall Hat with Mustache" stoneware shakers. I looked at my Holt Howard book and did not find them. I don't know if they have an official name, but that's what I'm calling them. Um, they are four and a quarter inches high by two and uh, three quarters inches in width. Um, they have the original stoppers, but as you might see there, someone wrote on the bottom what looks like Hulk Howard or H U I K Howard on both of them. <laughs> I don't know why, because um, one does have its original Hole Howard sticker on the back. One does not. Uh, one has the five holes. One has the the three holes. Now, interestingly, while I was sitting here, I was like, I got to make sure I know what I'm talking about. Now, we all know that the five holes are typically pepper, right? And then the three holes would be the salt, because you don't want as much salt. What's interesting about this is that this one has this like black speckling at the bottom. I thought, oh, certainly that's pepper. Not in the U.S., but in Europe where pepper was more rare, the pepper was actually the one with the five holes and then the salt was only with the three holes. Or I'm sorry, reversed. I said that wrong. But in Europe, it was different. So I thought that was an interesting little bit of information. Again, starting at $18, there's another version of these where they're wearing a turban versus kind of the tall hat. Um, and again, not familiar with the series. I didn't see them in the book. I don't know if you fellas have seen them in, I, unless I missed them in the book, I didn't see them. Not um, I'm not really sure of the era. They're more stoneware than uh, ceramic to me. And Amy's right. They're 70s era. Holt. They were right at the end as Holt Howard was phasing out. Which is not surprising to me. I, I assumed the same, which is kind of why when I was doing my reel, I paired it, paired them with the mushroom uh, ceramic hobbyist mushroom piece because I thought that kind of looked good together. Um, but just a little funny. I like the expression. I love the big mustache. But there's an interest on these. I'll put them aside and bring them back for our shortly upcoming recap. And if you Pretty guys bright. do like a if you guys do like a cowboy display, they would look great in your cowboy display, or maybe even a Seco de Mayo kind of display. Really good. Okay, Jason. Uh, next up is a sixteen dollars start bid. Okay. I'm bringing a piece of mid century here. This is Shawnee. And it is, it is a four-sided bowl. It measures four inches tall and seven inches wide. And as you can see, it's got a squiggle. I call it like a squiggle pattern on the, on the sides. It's not coming through as well, but it is gold, the squiggle pattern. No chips, cracks, or breaks in it. Very good condition overall. Clean on the inside. Again, on the bottom, Mark Shawnee, USA. I know it's backwards. Uh, this one is 1018 is the number on this piece. To me, sometimes I'm, my husband says I'm a little colorblind. Sometimes I disagree, but this is like a peachy pink color. It's kind of, it, it, I think it can go either way. I'm not sure how it's coming through for you guys. It's looking a little bit more peachy now, but in the house, it's looking a little bit more pink. Like a salmon color, maybe. Yeah, it's probably that is pre probably a better accurate. It, it is. It is the salmon color. So there was the aqua, the mint, and the salmon in this squiggle pattern. So it, I think they did call it salmon. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thanks, Bill. Nineteen fifties at its best. Yeah. Like and the square one, I'll say, just because I'm a I'm a collector, the square one, I don't even have one. I have a lot of the rectangular and a lot of the um, cylinders, but the square ones, I've never seen in real life. This is the only one I've ever come across, and um, I've got some other pieces, but this of this particular color pattern, uh, I haven't come across any others in the wild, so to speak. But we're going to get to our recap, so we'll we'll bring this back very momentarily. All right, guys, I have choice at $18 on some barware, and this is all space themed. So this all came out around that whole 1969 moon landing era. So this is your first choice at 18. This is the little rocket ship. These have become very collectible. These are great bar glasses because they help you measure, you know, the different liquid line. And then the underside here where the rocket part is, that is your little shot glass uh, or your little jigger. So you can use the bottom here to measure and then the top part you can use it to also measure your cocktail drinks or you can use it as a, a pedestal glass so this is this this um is uh recognizes the moon landing boy words are tough after like 10 30 at night 
Man on the Moon, July, July 20th, 1969. Thank you, Nikki. I see you in at 18. Uh, very good condition. Um, I had one of these for years in my barware. This is your moonshot glass. Um, and trying to find this anymore, I'm sure you can find them on eBay, but trying to find this anymore is really, really difficult. Um, has no dishwasher wear. Um, it's really fun. Goes great with your moon, man. There you can see the moon. It has the American Eagle on it. So this is great for 4th of July. It's great if you love space things, all the above. Um, this measures just about six inches tall. So that's six inches tall. Again, it is your measuring glass or cocktail glass. And then you have your shot or your little, you know, so you can measure things. Then for the bid, we're at 20. You can also then you'll get all of these. These are the little set of Libby glasses that commemorate. That's the word I wanted, the moon landing. Um, you do find the other ones, these roly polies made by Libby in the kind of the smoky blue, not so much. Uh, they're in very good condition, but there are two of them that have a manufacturing defect. They made these and they, they produced them and sent them out so quick. Some of them got a little smeared in manufacturing. That's actually in the glass there. So I can't clean that. So, but other than that one, and I think there's one little manufacturing defect on another one. They're all for like brand new condition outside of that. And of course, this depicts and goes with the other glass I showed you. Uh, this is the, the man on the moon. And then it, of course, depicts his saying, Neil Armstrong, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So these are fun and you will get all four. So you will get all four. That'll be one choice. You know, and they're the fun 1960s into the 70s at quintessential roly-poly in the smoked color. And they are made by Libby. You'll just sort of see the L on the underside. So we're in at 20. Thank you guys so much. So your bid will be for the set of four moon landing roly-poly style mugs or the Apollo moonshot. So let's go ahead and count them down. We're looking for 21 or more just in case for active bidders from 20. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. These are stackable roly pulleys. These are great for the 4th of July. They're great if you're into the space theme. Thank you guys so much. And again, you either choose the set of four or the one, and we're just waiting on that bid in. I see you're just in cases. Thank you so much. Again, thank you, Karen G., so much, and Kim, thank you so much. So the top bid goes to Patty. Thank you so much, Patty. At 36, Patty, let me know. Uh, we'll make it easy. You can just put in the set, put in set of glasses, and this one we'll call shot. This one will be shot, or you can put in set, set or shot, and you can take them both if you wanted them all together. All right, I got you for the set of roly polies. Thank you so much. So Terry, at your 35, you could have the moon shot if you're interested in the moon shot one. If you pass, it will go back to Nikki. And then I think those were our only bidders because we have Terry. Terry was Terry in. Said yes. All right, Terry, congratulations. It's all yours. Thank you so much. We'll get us all back up here. Okay, everyone, it's the time in our broadcast where you have the opportunity to see anything that wasn't claimed earlier. Maybe you weren't here. Maybe you wanted some time to think about it. We are going to move pretty quickly. So what we're going to do, we're going to go one by one and show you anything that we brought earlier that wasn't claimed. Uh, and we're going to do pretty much the same thing again, except that we just move more rapidly. We'll show you an item, say what the start price is right away. And if you're interested in putting a bid in, uh, do it as quickly as you can so that we see it in the chat. It's also helpful when you're putting your bids in this time to also put a one word description of the item so that we know what you're talking about when we see your bid, because there may be several things that are the same price. As you know, I only brought two uh, different two different price points tonight. So uh, when you do put the the bid in, uh, put the price in, uh, and that's if you want something that that's here tonight. Um, uh, just in case remains active during uh, during the recap. If you are the only bidder and we don't see another bid come in, we'll do a real quick quick countdown. If another bid does come in, though, we will announce that we'll do a full countdown and um, 
and it's that easy. I'm going to start out so you can see how it goes, and then the other fellows will go. I have a few things. My first item is $20, and it's the clown alert. Um, so turn off your screens if you don't want to see the awesome little carnival doll clown. $20 if anyone's interested in amazing condition. Um, a little bit smaller if you collect these. It is a little bit smaller than the typical ones. So you can type in 20 clown. No, type in 20 doll. Type in whatever you want, but yeah. <laughs> um, I also have... I have something. For $10, I had that Merrill Publishing Mother uh, Goose Book that I just showed in pretty good condition, just that little tear up at the top, um, and just a little discoloration, no funky smells. So you could write $10 book if you're interested in that book. Next, I had that really cool Mod Cat Planter. I showed this in the first round. This was also $10. Uh, it does have day glow paint, so all the pink and the orange glows. A tiny little line right here on the top. But other than that, in really good condition, it is bisque. So there's no glaze on it. So you could write $10 cats. And then I had Bluto or whatever we're calling him, Brutus. I don't know. The, the really great ceramic decanter also for $10 if anyone's interested. Um, I'm not gonna take his head off again, but the only condition issue that I pointed out is a little bit of loss with the cork um, on his stopper. And then last but not least, from the Flintstones round, I had two plates left. These are $10 each. Um, I had Fred, uh, everyone's looking for Fred, but he's up in the, up in the dinosaur trees uh, on a hammock. So you could write hammock or Fred for $10. And then I had uh, Dino greeting Fred coming home from work, also $10. And that's all I had, guys. Okay, buckle up, folks, because I got a lot to go through. I have the Inesco Butterfly Floral Ceramic Planter. This is Inesco Japan. This is $22. It is four and a quarter inches high by four and three quarters inches long. If you want this, you can put Butterfly 22, Butterfly 22 on the Inesco Butterfly Planter. I had the choice of the Antique Emboss Butterfly Postcards. I had this first one that says a happy birthday. This is printed in Germany. This is about three by five is what I'm going to say. The pink on the butterfly is flocked. If you want this one, you can put flocked 10. Flocked 10. Again, this is an antique postcard used. Flocked 10. Then I had the birthday greetings also embossed. Don't know the maker on this one, but I do know it's from 1910. This you can put purple uh, 10, purple 10 on that one for the two postcard, one of the postcards. I had the hobbyist uh, ceramic mushroom pitcher. This is a wall pocket. Um, this was 16. I'll do this for 14. You can put mushroom 14, mushroom 14 on that. I had the uh, Fenton thumbprint milk glass bud vase. This is eight inches high, two and a half inches at the base. This was $24. You can put milk glass uh, 24, milk glass 24. Just a couple of little ash marks at the very top of this. So milk glass 24. I had the Holt Howard tall man with mustache shaker set. They're kind of a stoneware, about four and a quarter inches tall. Um, the set was 18. You can put Holt Howard 18 if you want that. They have their stoppers. Someone wrote Hulk Howard at the bottom of them. And then there's a Holt Howard sticker on the back of one of them. So uh, Holt Howard 18 on those. I had the Joseph's 1963, Joseph's original 1963 birthday dolls for April and May. April has a bow repair on the back. They have the original stickers for both the month and the Joseph's original stickers. No other condition issues. Some where to the stickers though. These were $22 each. You can put April 22 or May 22 for either of those. I had the Garfield Inesco Gemini uh, figurine from 1981. Doesn't have, it does have its original Inesco sticker on the bottom. Has all about Gemini, which runs from May 21st to June 20th. Um, the two-headed uh, Gar Garfield, these come in a variety of different um, styles for the different astrological signs. These are harder to find. I had this at um, $42. I'll do it for $40. There is a um, hairline right there. It's not doesn't seem structural. It doesn't go to the bottom, but just pointing that out. And then there's one little bit of missing paint right there on the very back. So I'll do this for $40. You can put Gemini 40 if you want the Garfield 1981 Inesco figurine. I had the also a Nesco, little May figurine. She's a sweetheart of the month. Um, this is a harder to find a Nesco series. There is some writing on the bottom. It does have a Nesco sticker, but that has some wear. Has the synthetic hair, super cute. 
Um, this is $25. You can put May 25 if you want her. And that may be it, but let me do one little quick check on everything. Yes, that is all I had. Over to you, Brian. Okay. Um, this was, we just had this up a few seconds ago, a few minutes ago. It is a Shawnee salmon color mid century bowl. It is seven inches wide, four inches tall. This was $16. So you can say Shawnee 16. Earlier in the evening, I had the Fire King Jadeite Swirl Bowl, um, a few little scratches in the uh, utensil scratches, but really only when you turn it into the light. This one is seven inches diameter and 3.5 inches tall. It is $30, so you can put 30 uh, Jadeite on this piece. Uh, bringing back the former former lamp that is now just more of a statue, Hager, Royal Hager Mermaid statue. This is $60. The one condition issue is either there's a chip of paint there or it was missed in the glazing process. I, I think it's still, uh, to, to say what I said earlier, I, I believe it's more of a chip in the paint though. Um, she is 15.5 inches tall, can easily be converted back into a lamp. Um, no other real condition issues that I noticed. This is an old TV lamp. Phenomenal. And, and then let's see, what else did I have here? These were $12 each. These are made by um, Kruger in West Germany. They have lenticular, lenticular eyes. They are $12 each. These are the three that are remaining. Uh, unused postcards on the back. And you could put, um, if you're interested, put $12 elephant, $12 tiger, or $12 cat for those. We had for 38, I have the Acme Pixie, uh, Leaf Pixie, Leaf Dancer, Flower Pixie, uh, whichever name you want to call them in very good condition without any damage, just a little bit of paint wear on the gold shoes, but no other issues that I noticed. It does not say Acme on the bottom, but that is the maker made in Japan stamp. And that is four inches tall. So we're looking for 38 on that. Uh, let me just write down Amy for the cat. Thank you, Amy, appreciate it. And up next, I also had this very tall mus music box, posable girl in very good condition. Really no issues that I'm seeing. It does work. And she was $40. And I, let me find the height on her. She's definitely tall. I think I said she was over 15 inches, if I recall. Yeah, 50, or 15 inches tall. So looking for 40 for her, very clean. Uh, I don't believe she was displayed. The hair was not cut or anything like that. Bug, I see you for the tiger. So let me put you down for that. Thank you so much. Uh, what else am I missing? Is that everything? I think that's, I think that's everything. All right. And Chrissy's going to take your elephant postcard. Oh, fantastic. Thank yep, you. Yep, Chrissy. Yep. And Brian, if you see something, we'll come back to you then Thank once you. I do my recap. So, and everybody, if you're watching this in the replay, we know a lot of you can't join us live, but you watch the replay and you see anything that was not claimed during our recap. Everybody's email is in the description. It's also pinned in the top of the chat. Please feel free to email any of the sellers long after, you know, even a week or so after the sale, see if it's still available and they will get you invoiced and get it shipped out to you. So uh, don't hesitate to ask because it still could be available. So from my uh, glass candy container round, uh, it was $12. I have the little dog remaining. So he's in really good condition. He even, ha even has his original paper around the top. He would be $12. And I do believe that's the original candy on the inside. So $12 on him. There's no damage. Uh, so he's just a fun little addition to uh, a collection you could start. All right. I'll wait a moment. But Lisa, you're the first one in at 12. So I'll just wait another second for the lag. 
but I think we're going to call it. So Lisa, that's yours for 12. Thank you so much. So you got them both. So let me make note of that. Thank you so much. We'll set that over here. Then I had my little um, handkerchief or uh, neckerchief uh, holder. He's a little uh, boy scout. He is the scout on a rocket. He is made of plastic. He was $30. So if anybody's interested, you could put in 30. What I take is um, they could win or they could earn merit points to then purchase or earn these little uh, different little bolos that hold held their um, handkerchief around their neck. And this one is, I think, speaks to the, the era. You know, it's a little uh, scout on a rocket with the moon behind. Now, there is embossing here on the back. It is made of plastic. And the company is Torchy, Torchy Plastics. I had never heard of Torchy Plastics. So that is available. So just put uh, Scout 30 if you're interested in that. And then I had my piece of art for the evening. It is oil on canvas. It is on the larger side, starting at $20 if anybody's interested. It is abstract. I do believe it is mid-century. Somebody did put on the back here that the artist is this Engelberg C. Green. I've been selling some of his artwork uh, for the past few months. They have it that it's somewhere between six, 1963 and 1965. Um, if you guys are into the mid-century color scheme, you have your oranges, your reds, your tans, your, your blacks in there. And it measures 15 by 19. 15 by 19. It is professionally framed but I could take it out to ship it. So that does it for me, fellas. Now it's time for the quick claims. So let's click like that. So let's get us back where we all started from because I have to have us all. There we go. All right, Bill. Oh, you're Run. muted, Bill. So the quick claims work a little bit differently than, um, than the regular sale. In this portion, we're each going to show you two items, one at a time, or two rounds of items, and we're going to describe it, but we're not going to tell you the price right away. We're going to take some time to describe the item, tell you anything you need to know about it, and then we're going to tell you the price. And if you're interested in the item, what we need you to do is type in a letter from the alphabet that we will give to you. Uh, it needs to be the correct letter and the item will go, or the choice in case there's a choice round, the choice of items will go to the person who types in the letter first, the correct letter first. Um, and if there are multiple items, we can continue to go with uh, other people if, if the first person doesn't claim everything. Uh, it's as simple as that. Um, there's no there's no countdown, there's no bid ending, it's just a quick quick claim. So um, we have some great stuff for the quick claim section and I'm gonna start us out. Uh, I have two really fun, and again, kind of fitting my theme of, of curiosities tonight. Uh, I have two fun 1973 Fisher Price children's puzzles. I just love how graphic they, they both are. And for their age, they're in really good condition. There's a little wear. I've put them in plastic just to preserve them and so they don't fall out. There's a little wear at the corners, as you can see. They are marked and dated on the back. They were made in 1971, 72, and 73. Um, so the first one is this little trio of owls, very 70s. And then the second choice, because there are two choices, is this little puppy with the little bird, the little mushrooms. They just really scream 70s to me. Um, and they are going to be $5 for choice. And if anyone is interested in claiming one or both, you would type the letter T. The letter T would get you choice for one or both. And that's how the quick claims work. So for my first quick claim, um, I have a classic. I have the Napco May Angel. This is the S series. So this is the S1365. It has its Napco sticker. It has some light crazing all around. Not on the face, though, which is a good thing, because sometimes that's what happens. This is the May Angel, though. Again, there were three series from Napco of the Birthday Angels, the A series, the C series, and the S series. The S series measures about four inches tall by two and a half inches wide. If you want the May Napco Angel, just type in the word... Well, it's going to be $20. Type in the letter S. S will get you the Napco May Angel for 20 Over to you, Brian. Okay. Bill, did you have a claim? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And you okay. go ahead. 
Um, my next item is a uh, Dabs decanter. It is 16.75 inches tall. It does, as you can see, have the stopper. The stopper comes in and out very easily. The plastic on the stopper is in very good condition. Uh, I'm not seeing any damage on this particular piece. Um, sort of genie bot bottle style um, to maybe be a companion to Jason's from earlier tonight. And if you are interested in this piece, it is $30 and you can put the letter D in for decanter. So $30 and the letter D for this Dabs decanter that was made in Portugal. You never see this one. You never see this one with this stopper. So it almost looks very similar to what's behind you, Jason. But it does. It does. Yep. And those are the uh, Empoli ones. Yeah, it does. Minus the stopper piece, of course. Right. Okay. Over to you. All right, guys. Um, yeah, I can't do like Moon and Genie without bringing some Moon and Star. So it's ironic. John had some. This will be quick claim. Uh, I have the clear compote. I do believe that these are made by Ellie Smith. I don't believe that these are the LG Wright ones. They don't glow or fluoresce under black light. So this will be your first choice. This will be the larger compote. Um, and this measures about eight by seven and a half. So this is moon and stars. If you guys you know, were here earlier, you saw John had the covered candy dish. Then here's a little different compote, the wider one that you don't normally see. So this will be your other choice. This one measures uh, seven by nine across. So this one is really fun. You don't even see this size too often in the colored uh, glass by Ellie Smith in the moon and stars. So uh, no chips, no cracks. They're in very good condition. They are going to be $22 choice. So just $22 choice. If you are interested in them, again, no chips, no cracks, $22 choice. I got to get my, my piece here. It'll be M for moon and stars. So the first one it puts in M for moon and stars, you can take one or two and we are just going to go tall or wide. So you either pick the tall one or the wide one. Steel, I see you in with the M. Let me know which one or ones you wanted at 22. Um, you can let me know this one is your tall one. This one will be your wide one. And then you got the tall one. Thank you so much. So Laura at uh, circle seven, did you want the wide one at 22? This one I have to tell you is a little harder to find than the other one. They're both harder to find with them being clear, but I've never had this one before and was excited to offer it. So if you're interested, just say yes. That one could be yours for 22. So I'll just watch the chat. All right. Thank you so much. Bill, you're up, sir. Okay. So uh, for my very last round, I have this great little barrel mug, which I think is super, super fun. It is only three inches tall. And again, with Father's Day coming up, I thought it might be fun to have a little novelty um, to maybe give to give to some guy in your life or some lady in your life. Um, really fun, just three inches tall, in great condition, no chips, no cracks. Uh, I love these things. And it, this is a choice round. I also do have um, this little bass player in this bright red, uh, bright red top with this really great, crazy hair. I do want to point out though, and that's why it's coming to the quick claims that there is a repair. The foot has been repaired. Um, so just be aware of that if you're interested. And these are going to be $8 quick claims for choice. The little mug or this really great bass player. The face is great. Uh, if anyone's interested, it would be the letter H for choice. Letter H gets you choice on the little mug or the bass player for $8. Okay, I have a uh, Mother's Day lot for my last quick claim round. Um, I see Tracy for H. Tracy, which did you want, the boy or the barrel? I so let like Bill, let Bill know. Like the, the one with the hair. Um, so I have a Mother's Day lot of some of my favorite things. The first item in this lot is this mom mug. This is by Anchor Hawking. Um, it has this kind of coat of arm shield design to it. I cannot find another one like this. So this is part of the lot. So that's your first item in this lot. I love a mug, as you know. 
They have a piece of vintage advertising. This would have been from some sort of restaurant uh, promoting their Mother's Day brunch or breakfast or lunch or dinner. Celebrate Mother's Day with us. This is from 1968. It is Mark Yogg and Company on the side of it. Um, these go great in flower frogs. So that's your second item. This is about eight inches tall. Then I love some floral and cake things. Um, this is a cake topper with this mother card, oh, MasterCard kind of reminiscent design. So you get one of those. It's about five by six. And then finally, in this lot of many, many things, you're going to get some Mother's Day floral picks. I have several designs. You're going to get six of, of them. I won't show you all of them, but you'll have six that come with this in the mix. So you get the six floral picks, the Mother's Day cake topper, the MasterCard version, the kind of uh, restaurant table tent, and then the Mom Mug by Anchor Hawking. All of this for $24. Just type in the letter D for day, D for day, and it'll get all four for are all items for $24. That is a cool lot, John. I like that. That is. Thank you. Yeah. Those flower picks alone are worth what you're selling it at. That credit card, come on. Yeah, I know. All right, Steel, <laughs> Steel's claiming it, John. Thanks so much. Okay, my final item, I have this set of mugs in the caddy and they were made in Japan. They're not marked with a name, but they were made in Japan. I'll take a few out so you can see. There's two of, these are supposed, I think these are supposed to be lemons, but they're round. And then there's two of the oranges. The mugs are in very good condition without any damage. There's this like weird manufacturing bump on this one here. Um, the caddy does have some wear. Uh, let me point out. Uh, it's got some, I, brown marks i don't know if it's quite rusting probably rusting around here and then uh around some of the the different holders you could kind of see it a little bit better there um i think some of it will scrub off i i did get some of it off if there is a buyer i will put a little bit more elbow grease into it i didn't i didn't go full force um the japan sticker is there it does have wear as you can see uh, the mugs are five inches tall, though, and again, there's four of them, so you get the whole thing. Let me just show it real quickly one more time. And these, I'm, I'm pretty sure this caddy was made for these mugs because of the handles and how, um, you know, these side, side openings are. So if you're interested in this whole set, it'll be... $25 and you could put okay. the letter T for tree. That's great. Those cola style mugs. I love them. I love that caddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, four feet all there. Good claim. Yeah. Good claim, Deanna. That Deanna. Thank you very much, Deanna. Appreciate it. All right. And my final quick claim for the evening is sort of star themed with the atomic stars on it. it has those rhinestones in there 1950s pleather little case this is for the fancy sophisticated individual that wants to put their keys in there so there is a there's like a velvet inside and then there's a little holder right there that you could place something in it says right here on the inside that it is buxton key tainer so I don't know what that exactly means. I guess that is the company and what they considered this was going to be. So that's what's on the inside. I couldn't find it, any of these anywhere. So it is pleather. It is a hard case, kind of like the old cigarette cases. And it has its original rhinestones, very 1950s. There might be a slight discoloration here on the back. And it measures about three by two and a half, three by two and a half. Um, I think it's a really fun piece. So it's going to be $14 if anybody's interested and you put in the letter S because of the star there. S because of the leather, letter star, 1950s at its best. You don't see these much anymore. $14 if anybody's interested. All right, Terry, congratulations. It's yours. It's a fun piece. So let's get everybody back up here. Let's get everybody back to there. I'm sorry, fellas. I, there we go. So everybody's back. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. 
Um, we're going to quickly go around and tell you where we're going to be at next. But as always, we couldn't do this without our mods. So Karen G, thank you so much for being our official mod and bid ender. Thank you so much, Kim Desert Gal, for being our backup. Ladies, if you could put your links in there, like Gavin's link or Kim, your link to Vamp, please do so. Please make sure you're subscribed to all the fellas up here on the screen. And if you're watching this during a replay and you see anything that was not claimed in the recap or even during the quick claims, reach out to any of us. Our emails are right below us. And if it's still available, we are going, we'll get you invoiced and get it sold to you. So, Bill, where can they find you at next? I will be back here on Mother Tucker's YouTube channel on Monday for the weekly Mother Tucker's Monday sale at 8 o'clock with Jason. I've already pulled my items, everyone, and it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Bragger. You're Bill, such a bragger. Such a bragger. I Over Cheever. That, yep. Over Cheever. <laughs> I, I have two things pulled for this week. All right, John, where are you going to be at next? I will be back on Instagram on Thursday for the regular Kitsch Keeper sale at 5 p.m. Eastern with my friend Steph Crazy for Kitsch. If you saw some of Bill's items tonight, you like that. We're doing a whole uh, Under the Big Top Circus and Clown themed sale. So lots of things themed to that under the big top. That's over on uh, Instagram on maybe not that, but over on Instagram on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, hope to see you over there if you're into that sort of uh, theme. All right, Brian. I am next back up with our next sale on Instagram. We have not announced that theme yet. We know the theme, but we have not announced it yet. So I'm not going to announce it. it. Go for it. You want me to? Go yeah. for it. All right. Well, we're going to we're going to be doing a. We're bringing back from last year our kitchen sales, K I T S C H E N sales. So everything kitsch related to your kitchen, as the name implies. So likely to be salt and pepper shakers, I would imagine, and anything else that we find that fits into that theme. What's that? No. Tupperware. Tupperware. Oh my God. All it, might be too soon. it might be too soon, Bill. Who knows? I, I, Never too soon. You still, All... you still have some left after 120 pieces. Right. And Jason is going to perform the Tupperware song for us. Tupperware. Tupper, I will practice it. I will do it. And I will do Please. it right. I will get my sweatband out and everything. I will do it right. And I something tells me he would attend if you if if you reached out to him and asked him. I think I just might do that. I think I might just do that. And I don't know, because Bill will be at least the king of the vintage Tupperware. So, because Bill loves some vintage Tupperware. So, um, guys, I'll be back Monday with Bill for Mother Tucker's Monday here on my channel. And then Wednesday, I will be back for Fantastic Finds with the one, the only, Enamor Amy. Um, again, guys, if you saw anything that was not claimed here tonight, please reach out to these sellers. They will get you invoiced and get you sh get it out and get it shipped. One more time, if you guys were a new buyer to any of us, please make sure you email us all the information. We need your name, your screen name, if it's different from your real name, your full address. We're going to need an email so we can get that invoice out to you. And then we also ask that the invoices be paid within 24 to 48 hours of receiving them, okay? So, um, guys, with that said, thank you guys so much for hanging out with the Valentinos. Please consider becoming an organ donor. There's not much time left in this month. This is National Organ Donor Month. So, please, if you are not registered as an organ donor, please consider it. It's the gift of giving when you leave this earth, wherever you think you go. There are folks in this community that I know for a fact that are on the transplant list. There are folks in the community that could soon be on a transplant list. So, every little bit helps. If you are on the transplant list, I commend you and I thank you so much for that gift. Uh, but if you're not, maybe you could consider asking somebody. Again, don't want to make this a political platform, but just please give it a thought, okay? And also, guys, please do an random act of kindness. I'm finding today the world's not as nice as it once was. So please just be kind to one another. Open up a door for somebody. Thank somebody one more time. Maybe even if you can do it, Buy the person's coffee that's behind you and let's pay it forward and let's try to make it just a little bit kinder for everybody. So, fellas, it's so fun hanging out with you. We're going to get out of here and you guys have a very, very good rest of your Friday night. And we'll see you back on Instagram with these fellas the first Friday of the month.